And we are back. Sorry. Whoa. Oh, we are back. We are back. Are we live? I think so. Is it all working? Okay, good. Good, good. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry, I yelled, <laughs> I peaked a little bit there, okay, we are back, it is the Chronicast 2, holy cow, we are back, and why, because it's still here, this gold darn virus, it's still among us. It's still hurting us. It's a pain in my ass. Hold on. This is just like last time. I came in too hot. I gotta breathe. Son of a bitch. Okay, I feel better now. Uh, oh, damn. All right, so we are back. This is the Chronocast 2. Chronocast Deuces Wild. The Chronocast 2 in the Hole. 2, two is that an expression? 2 in the Hole? 2 in the Hole, 1 in the... I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the show. This is going to be a four-hour live stream broadcast. It's a marathon and a sprint. I hope that you stick around for the whole thing. I'm not going to be... I'm, I'm, I'm a little... little oh. <laughs> I've got like laser-powered... Uh, uh, I was going to say focus, but then I, I immediately got distracted. I'm going to chill for a moment. This is a chill stream. This is a chill stream. If you saw the last Corona cast, you saw it's just we hang out for four hours. We talk about, we shoot the shit. We talk about Corona, this whole Corona situation, all this crap, this Corona crap. We have loads of experts whom I have <clears throat> found on the internet. That doesn't make them any less experts. It's not like I found them on, like, Fiverr or something. They aren't $5 experts. They're no dollar experts, actually, because I did not pay any of them to appear on this show. That's how you know that they're the real deal. They're doing it for the love of their expertise instead of the cold, hard cash. Same with me. Here I am. 
with nothing to show for it. That's not true. All right, anyway. I've got my, my brews all here. I was chugging this monster, which is kind of part of why I'm a little too fired up. <sighs> but we'll settle. We'll settle into the whole deal. This show, The Chronicast, is brought to you partially by me. I'm going to be hosting it. You're going to be seeing a lot of me here. But it's not just me who is involved in creating the show. Not by a long shot. All of the music, all of the visuals, all of the ads and everything, everything you hear throughout this show, if it's not coming from me, is coming from the people who make the zine. This is the zine. Look at that. Is that beautiful? It is. The zine... Okay, if you don't know what a zine is, a zine, zine is, it's short for magazine. It's that, is the zine part of magazine. And it just, it means like a little magazine. And it's usually for, it's more niche interests than a magazine. Whereas a magazine might be about just dirty whores, your average dirty whore that anybody can get into. A zine might be about a very specific kind of whore, one that, like stinky whores, the zine. You see, because there's less, there's less of a potential audience for stinky whores, and it would need to be smaller for the same reason because there's less people getting it. But smaller does not mean less significant. The zine is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Here's just one spread. You can kind of see this zine is not about stinky whores, nor is it for stinky whores. It is about it's just comedy. It's just comedy and art, writing. Most of it is humorous. Some of it's just, you know, just fun, creative, wacky business. It's a great, great thing. And it's right here. The reason it's here is because throughout the show, every half hour, not every half hour, but on the 30 minute point of every hour, I'm gonna be giving away two zines, I'm going to be giving away something else here. I've got TMH magnets, stickers, and the ultimate in rare prizes, the holographic TMH logo sticker. There's five of these. There's five of these. Everybody's going to get, everyone who gets a zine is going to get one of these. Okay. Anyway. Here's how you do that. If you would like to, you know, you can barely see it now. If you would like to be eligible to receive the zine, you must email me. You must email. Oh, God, I don't have my email. Is that going to work? Okay, nice. You got to email me, all right? Email the minute hour at gmail.com. You got to put your name. Not your whole name, you gotta put at least your first name, last initial. The male people tend to want that. They're very inconsistent about it. Some don't care at all, some care a whole lot, and they send me back lots of mail. First name, last initial, address, include your zip code, which is part of your address. I can't tell you how many people send me addresses without their zip code. It's not gonna disqualify you, but it is gonna disqualify you from this. You're not going to get this if you don't send me a zip code. All right, I'm sorry. Been too. <laughs> sorry to get in your face. I love this little camera. You're just like a little... I feel like I can bully you because you're so small. You're this tiny little camera. Yeah. All right. Anyway, this is going to be a four-hour show. It's just dawning on me. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of fun things going on. You can win the zine. You can win these stickers. We're just going to be talking about stuff. Uh, I'm going to actually, you know, I'll begin the show now. I've got these quart containers. I've bought these in bulk. I've got 260 of these quart containers. They're excellent. They're rigid, but they they got a little bit of bendiness, but they're nice and rigid. Microwave safe. Um, you can put hot stuff in there, cold stuff. I'm just going to mix myself a little monstrous drink here. You know, I was watching this, uh, 
I was watching an interview of Dick Van Dyke. He was on the, this is from the 70s, he was on the Dick Cavett show. Dick Van Dyke on the Dick Cavett show. Just a couple of dicks. And Dick Van Dyke is an alcoholic, I learned. I didn't know that. Or he's a recovering alcoholic. And he was talking uh, to Dick Cavett about it. And he said, Dick the alcoholic. Hold on a second. I have experts calling in, but they must wait for my cue. I'm trying to talk about alcoholism here. Dick Van Dyke said the alcoholic derives, he has no need for food. For he derives all of his calories from alcohol. He said he can go for days, the alcoholic. The hypothetical alcoholic. Al the hypothetical alcoholic. He can go for days, weeks, without eating a single morsel of food for all he needs is beer. Because beer has calories and nutrients. And I heard Dick Van Dyke say that on the Dick Cavett show and I thought to myself, now that's a good idea. I want to try that. And I got to tell you folks, Dick Van Dyke was right. You don't have to eat shit. You don't have to eat shit. You don't even have to eat food. You definitely don't have to eat shit. But you don't even have to eat food is what I mean. You could just drink beer. It's like a dream come true. Anyway. Uh, Christ. We're already a little bit behind because I spent five minutes taking a breather, but uh, we will have experts calling into the show. We have, we have several experts who are lined up, all different, in all different fields, all variety of experts, and they're all legit. They're real people. The first one who's going to be calling is Dr. Quaid. He was actually on our last show. He was, he's an online doctor, an internet doctor, slash professor at an online hospital slash university um, in the American Samoa. Uh. That's Dr. Quaid. He'll be calling in in just a moment. He was just calling in a second ago and I rudely hung up on him because I was trying to get into this quart of beer. Hello, Dr. Quaid, is that you? Uh, hello. Yes, I'm here on the scene. How's it going? It's good. It's good. What 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 scene is it that you are on? Are you in the American well, Samoa? Uh, hear, no, actually. I hear something in the background there. Yeah, let me get a little closer to that. Uh, I'm going to start at the beginning. Okay. I uh, ended last uh, call in with uh, a, a very important announcement that methamphetamine is the cure to coronavirus. Unfortunately, as you know, this did not spread. Uh, in fact, it was, you know, locked down by the government. No one wants me to talk about it. Um, but I had another theory, actually. I had another theory about the coronavirus that might, uh, I don't know. I think it might rock the globe. You've got something. You've got, you're working on something. I'm working on, I'm working on something now. I, uh, I actually learned about something, something that's kind of interesting to me recently. And it's mm -hmm. something, something I'd never heard of before. Have you heard of this? It's called fire. Have you heard of that? Fire, uh, like burning, burning well, fire. I don't know what that is, but it's this like orange. It's like really hot. I just yeah. swam all the way. All right. Yeah, yeah, up. fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty orange, familiar. Hot. What did you? What was that word you said? Is it burns? Burns burning. things. Burning. Yes, burning. Yes. Uh, so listen. I'm a doctor, right? Way smarter than you, way smarter than everyone listening. And I just swam all the way from the American Samoa, where my online university server is, and, and hospital, the server for the hospital too. I swam, swam all the way over. You swam? I swam. Well, I was on methamphetamine. I mean, I can do anything at this point. And I just swam all the way over to California, 
You ever heard of that one? I, I'm sure you, you've heard everyone. I mean, honestly, I don't know where the hell the American Samoa is. Maybe it's just a, a five-minute swim. I don't know. Is it long? It was about two hours. It was a two-hour oh. swim. Sounds like yeah. a good swim. It was a nice. It was a nice swim. I'm cooled down. I'm ready to go. I uh, listen. Let me let me let me introduce my my theory. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's called fire is coronavirus. Okay. Uh, this is the theory. You've heard about the California wildfires. It's, yes. Uh, the, uh, the whole state. Mm -hmm. Right. Ongoing. Up in fire. Ongoing. Ongoing. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm right next to it right See, now. It smells like shit. That's I'm where you are lie. right now. You're you're in California in in the wildfires. Well, not within, uh, but well, I can I can hear them. I can hear burning fire. Oh yeah, Sorry. I'm I'm right there. I'm looking. So I'm on. I'm cresting a hill right now, and I'm I'm getting closer. And my theory here's why. Right, unintuitive. Right, orange coronavirus isn't orange, but check this out. It spreads. Okay, you know what else spreads? The coronavirus. Hmm? That's not all. It makes you cough. Right? Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about yeah. it. And finally, this is the, the clincher, right? Those other two, maybe a coincidence. The last one? Maybe. Not a coincidence. Maybe, right? It kills people. Right? It makes them hide. They are one and the same. And I guarantee you, this is a 100% certain thing. What do you think? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I'm just a layman, of course, as you pointed out earlier. I, I don't know. I yeah, generally yeah, don't know. Yeah, little idiot, yeah. really, just kind of, well, just kind of riding the wave of, you okay. know, what comes your, comes your way. I don't, That's fine. I don't think that I'm dumber than the, than the average idiot, but I do think I am the average idiot. Uh, okay. So, to right. me, that sounds kind of crazy. Fire yeah. is... Corona. I mean, what, what what was the orange thing even about? What does orange have to do with either? Well, like that's the color. Orange, I orange, mean, orange is fire, yeah. But what is, but what is Corona with the orange? Well, you know, you ever seen those diagrams? I mean, I am a virologist. I'm not necessarily a virologist, but is it a coincidence that those two things are the same? One letter off. Think about it. Um, hmm. Orange, right? The coronavirus. Yeah. The little diagram you see with all the spikes and shit. Mm -hmm. Always orange. Go back, go in your mind, mind's eye, always orange. Yeah, I now, do recall, yeah. I, uh, you may not believe me still. I, don't, I get it, I understand. Not very well, quick, just, not I very mean, I don't wanna, okay. I, Like I said, I don't, I don't have the scientific knowledge to say, hey, this is why you're wrong, I just, it feels wrong to me. I intuitively think it's wrong. I totally get it, but I'm about to prove you wrong. Okay. Now, in order to do that, right, here's kind of my, my methodology, they call it the scientific method, okay? I'm gonna I've go. Heard about that. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna collect a sample, right? I have this glass vial right here. I don't know if you heard that. Let me get it a little closer did, to the phone there. Yeah, right. Got uh -huh. that glass vial. And I'm gonna go collect a sample of this stuff you call fire. Okay, it's burning. It's hot. It's orange, and I'm gonna collect a little bit of it, and I'm gonna take it back to my lab. Okay, I'm gonna swim all the way back to American Samoa, and I'm gonna prove once and for all these are the same thing. Okay, but so you're gonna I have you're to go about in. to go head first into the fires in order to collect a sample of fire in uh, order to do like a round of scientific testing on it yep yeah i mean i don't really know about I can it's i kind of hot I, but yeah can i can i okay what about this what about the fire that's not part of the california wildfires what about that fire uh well it's controlled right controlled spread flatten the curve that's basically you know how they say flatten the curve yeah the the curve that was flattened is, is the fire if you create say in a fireplace or you know in a fire pit those are controlled controlled burning burning I see. okay you're not yeah. concerned so, with that no not not worried at all the virus spreads in the, the wildfires so you know without I, I we could go on and on back and forth right there's that's how arguments go. There's a person who's wrong, there's a person who's right. I'm and not arguing. I'm just discussing. Well, to each Doctor, their own. Dr. Quay, I mean, I, I... Because I know about fire, I, or I knew about fire prior to this conversation, I yeah, also yeah. happen to know fire is very dangerous, especially when you're in close proximity to it. And so I am actually a little concerned for you, for your safety. You're telling me you're going to 
run right into the fires. I can yep. hear I can hear that you are in the vicinity of yeah. wildfires. Uh, well, I guess is any has anything is anything wrong? Or, it, it, like it, this seems like a kind of a you just dropped your whole American Samoan hospital gig. You swam to California high on meth, and now you're looking at these wildfires. Maybe I can talk you down out of this. I don't think it's a good idea, actually. I, you know, every theory has its dissenters, right? Copernicus, world revolves around the Earth. No, no one believes him. All right. Well, here I am. I'm the new Copernicus. There's nothing you can do to convince me. Actually, I'm going to put the phone right down, down right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive right in and get that sample, okay? What's the worst that could happen? A you little, could, get a little tan, right? No, no, you could burn to death. You could burn to death. You will. Look, you will. If you run into the wildfires, you will burn to death. I, I don't know. I just Do you don't have protective so. equipment? Do you have, like, one of those fire suits? Nope, just wearing a T-shirt, actually a Hawaiian shirt. Uh, it has some flowers on it. I think it's going to be all right. I mean, I've never heard of birding. You keep talking about this bird thing. I don't burn. know what a bird is. No, not bird. Burn. But it's 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 a verb. It means when when you get singed by fire. Do you know singe? Absolutely not. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? All right, si All right. It's just another word for burn. Just don't go in the fire, please, please, please right, go taking, back in the I'm ocean. I'm putting the phone down. I can't even hear you anymore. Okay. Can you please go back in the right ocean? In. I have this sample. Okay. And oh, here God, I go. Yeah. Look, I'm getting really close. It's fine. I right? hear the Everything fire getting okay. louder. Oh, all right. <laughs> Doctor Quake. Oh, Don't. Right. <laughs> yes. Fire. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. Shit. So to start the show, Doctor Quake. Perhaps died in the California wildfires. All right, okay. That was the first expert. I know that I was saying that the experts are all really le legit and everything. Dr. Quaid's the exception. Dr. Quaid's the exception that proves the rule, all right? Not every expert is legit, but we need the non-legit experts to show us what it's like to not be legit. Anyway, how are we already so far behind? <laughs> Holy cow, it's 622 already. All right, guys, Krona, 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 Krona. I need to get my opening thoughts out. I haven't even talked about Krona, what I think. I think it sucks, bro. I think it's a big-ass bitch, a dumb-ass bitch. Makes me want to go, <clears throat> I hate this Krona shit. I am getting pissed with this Krona shit. We have this virus that is here on the world, on planet Earth, and it is killing people. Yes but kind of a specific kind of person, you know? An old person. The old, old people. The very aged and elderly. The extremely advanced of years. They are the ones who are dying. They are the ones who are... I saw this stat on AP News just a couple of days ago. They haven't reported stats like this in a long time, but ever since good old Donald Trump got infected with coronavirus, the news has been... Talking about how it's not really that bad that he's you eighty know. percent of coronavirus cases, eighty percent have mild or no symptoms. They're asymptomatic, no symptoms. Eighty percent of cases. Fifteen percent are serious, five percent are critical, and then whatever, like point three percent or whatever are death. And it's just, it's been making me think like this is a serious disease for old people. You know those, you know that whole group of people that everything is really a serious disease to them because they're supposed to be dead now? That's my opinion, is that old people should be dead. So this virus is kind of a helpful thing. This is kind of a guide. When you get to the point where you're so old that this 
pussy ass virus is going to kill you? That's a sign from Jesus. Your time is up. You are no longer allowed to be here. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> I think this is a good time for old people to go underground. I've been wanting this for such a long time. Just get all the old people in bunkers and in the mountains. Built into the mountains. Because they're so fucking annoying, honestly. Every fucking day I got to talk to old people and they're so, you know, they whatever. They, they can be pleasant sometimes. But they got their own whole world, these old people. And they should do that. They should live underground from now on to be safe from the virus. Why has no one proposed that solution? Put all the old people away. Send them to space. They would love that. Get on a shuttle. They'd probably all die from the fucking G-force. All right. We're going to be moving right along. I'm way behind already, so let's just go right into this next thing. This is a... Uh, this is a... Um, a recording we got of an interesting sort of there's this corner kind of the the covid witch trials are happening right now so my my sister calls them now that it's flu season people who are sick it's like you know you hear a cough or a sneeze anywhere you're like what was that anyway this is a recording we have of a situation that kind of goes into that sort of business so <sighs> think i think you three know why you're here so i'll skip the pleasantries Last weekend, a fraternity or sorority hosted an illegal party on campus of over 500 students. Over 167 of the attendants have already tested positive for COVID-19. We've already narrowed down the list of possible fraternities or sororities that could have hosted the party to three, and we know that the president of the Oregon question has COVID-19. The only thing we don't know is which one of you it is. Oh, come on. We don't have this time for this. We've got to get back to I... the doctor. Have the floor. Let's meet our suspects, shall we? Trevor Wilkinson. Good afternoon, Dean. Third generation legacy, family famous for pharmaceutical miracle inventions. And you? Famous for drunkenly breaking your hand on a drywall stud. Makes one question whether you have any self-control at all, Trevor. What? How did you know that? I know everything that goes on on this campus. Let's move on. Sally Hansen. What is this about, Dean? Why don't you tell me, Sally? As the eyes and ears of the campus gossip mill, I'm sure you know who threw the party. Or maybe you were too busy cyberbullying your littles on Instagram to notice the rager happening last weekend. What? I don't even know what you're talking That's about. That's what I thought. Don't worry, we'll find out soon enough. Finally, we have Scott Aselovich. College football running back to the stars. <coughs> Widely lauded as the only reason we're three for three this semester. <coughs> hey, Dean. Hey, Scott. I'm super sorry about all this nonsense. I spoke to Coach Daniels. We're going to get you back to practice ASAP. This is all just a formality, so just play along. <laughs> Look at me telling a running back how to play. Dean, Scott obviously has COVID. He's been shivering this whole time. Not surprising that secret seller Sally would throw a student under the bus without provocation. Why don't we all just admit that we don't know what's going on, huh? Let's just let the truth float to the top. Okay, I'm going to ask the three of you the same question, and I expect you to answer truthfully. I don't want to waste anyone's time, and I'm sure many of us have things like homework or football practice to get back to. So let's do this quickly. Trevor? In the last two weeks, have you experienced any coughing or difficulty breathing? No, Dean. Hmm. Sally, in the last two weeks, have you experienced any coughing or difficulty breathing? No. Okay, kind of a quick answer. Scott, in the last two weeks, have you experienced any coughing or difficulty breathing? <coughs> no. Well, it looks like we have a liar in our midst. Uh, this is That's fine, because there are plenty of symptoms we can check. Everyone close your eyes. Are you serious Why right now? Shut them! Okay. I'm going to play something strong-smelling in front of each of your noses, and I expect you to tell me what it is. If you peek, you will be expelled, and that is a promise. First up, Trevor. What do you smell? Uh, strawberry? Very well. 
Sally, what do you smell? Yeah, it's a strawberry. Okay. Scott? Scott, sit up. This isn't nap time. Scott, what do you smell? Tubby. <sighs> I'm sorry, could you speak up a little? Strawberry. God damn it! One of you must be asymptomatic, and so help me Christ, I'm gonna find out who it is. I've got five other meetings today about COVID alone, but I will not leave- Gesundheit. I will not leave this office until I find out who the super spreader is. We didn't throw a party. Are you kidding Come me? Come on. Let me go home. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but if nobody speaks up, this is my only option. We're going to bring in the COVID sniffing dogs. Now, these dogs are aggressive. They're trained to attack anyone who is COVID positive. So, last chance. Does anyone have something to tell us? <coughs> okay. Send in the dogs. What dogs? I oh, good boy. All right, we're going to do this one by one. Scott, can you please focus up? Scott, do you have dog food in your pockets? Because they're really digging into your legs. Can you please be careful with their teeth? Because if you get injured... Scott? 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 Who's going to carry the ball, Scott? Who's going to carry the ball? Oh, this music, it means something. I think it means, oh! Oh, that's right, it's the same giveaway! Oh shit, you gotta check the email! One. Dylan C, you're gonna get this! Yeah, Dylan C! Dylan C. Dylan C. Okay, Dylan C. Because you are the first person to get this dazine, you also gonna get this the holographic sticker. Boom. I'm even gonna lick it, baby. Boom. Look at this. Dylan C, that's for you. Who's next, baby? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Send me these emails. It's a new one. It's a new one. Hey, Isaiah C, you son of a gun. You already got your free zine. You're not getting a... I remember who got the zines. You're not getting another zine. It's not really fair, but... It's, a, it's, a, it's my... It's, a, it's its own kind of fairness. Oh, I found a cool name. Alexander, spelled in some weird freaking foreign way. C! This dude's in Poland. I don't, I don't even, this, is, this address doesn't even make any goddamn sense. How the hell do you find anything in Poland? Is that the city? Is that the street? All right, Alexander C. Alexander. I don't understand your dress. I gotta look it up. Let's look it up, baby. Uh, let's see what Poland Poland looks like. No Google Street. Is there Google Street in Poland? Damn. Lucky you. All right. Oh, 
Jesus. Dude, I have no idea if this is going to get to you. Alexander C. I wish you the best. And because of that, I'm going to give you the least valuable thing here. The sticker. Okay. Alexander C. And Dylan C. Maybe they're related. I'll give you the stamps later. I don't have all my international stamps, actually. All right. Cool. 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 We did it. That's two. Two down. Dude, you guys are going to get this. Alexander C. and Dylan C. One's in Poland. Alexander. Send me, an, send me a follow-up email, Alexander, uh, just and explain your address to me. Explain it. You're still going to get the zine, but explain your address so I can make sure you actually get the zine. Okay, okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, all right. We're, we're back on schedule. I feel like I came off too harsh in the beginning, saying that I want old people to die and I want to put them all underground. <sighs> the problem is I just, I don't, I don't, like them. I don't like that modern medicine is allowing people to live older and older. I don't like that. I want old people to die when they are meant to die. When you're so old that everything is about to kill you all the time, like if you fell, you're just gonna die, then you should die. You should die. You should be dead. It's not a bad thing to be dead, all right? It's just, it's, it's normal. It's very normal. It's extremely normal. It's very abnormal to have multiple life extending operations, you know? Just fucking die. Just die. Jesus Christ, just die. Why do people want to live as long as humanly possible? What is the what is the what is the point of that? Okay. Anyway, I forgot to I forgot to say, "Hey, give it up for Rob. Give it up for Rob." Rob, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's, I was going to say he's useless, <laughs> but that's not what I mean. He's a good man. He's good. He's, he's, you know, Rob, do you have any, you got any opening remarks, Rob? I kind of skipped through your, I thought I was, you know, anything to say about the Corona situation? Rob? Oh shit, forgot to, he's got this. Dear God, indivisible. With liberty and college for all. Amen. Uh, yeah, sorry Rob, you're, uh, I had your mic muted for like pretty much all of that. You didn't hear my remarks? No, no, we didn't hear pretty much any of it. I'll start over. Uh, that's okay, don't worry about it, Rob, we got the gist of it. Anyway, Rob, good for him. Um, I wanted to say this about the old people. I'm going to stop talking about old people in a second, but I just, I don't, I want them to die. I want them to be underground. It just doesn't make a difference to me. I'm so far from being old. It's hard for me to walk a mile in their shoes. Cause if, and if they walked a mile in their shoes, they would just drop fucking dead, which is why they should isn't that what you think, Rob? Don't you don't you don't you have some weird friggin' idea about dead people or something? Yes. Yes, I believe that everyone is already dead. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And what 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 does that mean? It means I believe that we live in the infinite moment of understanding known as death as our last neurons fire trapped in this timeless experience which repeats itself over and over and over okay and over yeah yeah and over okay i get it i get it rob yeah very very interesting stuff 
Although it makes me think, you know, on the subject of uh, life and death, <laughs> what the hell do you know? You dumb, ugly bitch. Got him. Got that, Rob. He doesn't know shit, really. <sighs> I can't believe you're not wearing a mask. I'm at home, Rob. I don't wear the mask when I'm at home. That would be insane. You know, I wear it when I go to the grocery store because I have to because I, cause I, I, I need groceries. I need groceries. And, and I don't know how to force someone to give me service yet. But I'll, I'll figure it out someday. You wore one on the last show. I did, yes, because practically no one was wearing masks at that point, so it was funny. Now, now it's just fucking sad. You're going to get me sick. I am not going to get you sick, Rob. We, we, already, we already, remember, we thought I had corona last time, but I didn't. It was just, it was just bad heartburn. It was a bad turkey, remember? I am not going to get you sick. God, you're paranoid. And you're plastic. Furthermore. I'm sorry to play that card on you, Rob, but, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is, all right? Stop trying to be relatable. That's my job. You just sit there in the corner. You know, you, you're, you're just the hot piece of ass who sits in the corner and looks good, all right? While I do the heavy lifting. We put the keyboard in front of you to make it look like maybe you do the music, but we all know you don't, Rob. We all know you don't. Okay, that ought to stop him piping up for a while. Uh, there was a, there's something I wanted to say, though, is uh, speaking of masks, you know, I did actually, you know, there's been a lot of people saying, okay, first thing I love about masks, you can buy them. You can buy them, you can buy them. I love that you can purchase masks, and you have to. You know, it was a whole new product to buy. You never needed one before, but now you need one everywhere you go. It's like this beautiful thing where everyone has to, you have to wear it where you, wherever you go or else you'll be shunned, you know? You'll be chastised. You'll be thought of as a retard or a partisan and probably a racist also. But anyway, I thought, to, I thought to myself, okay, we're doing mass. We're all doing mass. All right. I'm getting in on this. People have asked me, and I'm saying yes. You want a TMH logo mask? Your prayers have been answered because you guess what? I'm selling masks because Teespring made it so damn easy for me to sell masks. Check this out here. Boom. The Minute Hour Mask. You can purchase this. It's live on Teespring. Oh, and what's this? It's $300. It's three hundred dollars. It's sorry, two ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah. It's six hundred dollars for two. There's no, there's no deal for buying two. It's three hundred dollars. Look at this. It's a logo. It's a mask. <laughs> Look at that. That's three hundred dollars. There you go. All right, go ahead, buy one. Buy one. Go ahead. It's only three hundred dollars. Okay, it's obvious. It's a little bit high. It's obviously a little bit high, but that's because okay. The reason I did that is because then fewer people will buy them, and thus few fewer masks will be made, and thus the value of the masks that are made will undoubtedly reach at least three hundred dollars, and probably far more. So if you buy one of these masks. It's an investment, right? It's an investment in your face. You know what I mean? It's going to increase the real estate value of your head. It's like Joe Biden's hair plugs and dentures. You know? Like if this was a man, if this was the toothless, hairless, old freak that this man truly is, you wouldn't listen to a goddamn word he says. That's another thing about old people. All right, but anyway... The mask is $300. Feel free to buy. Buy as many as you like. It's a great, 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 great thing. It's a great, great purchase. You're going to obviously love it. Uh, it's very high quality. 
And that's all there is to it. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> We've got another expert calling in shortly. This is someone who's got... Uh, they are a, a sort of medical expert, but it's a very specialized sort of medicine. Uh, it's an older form of medicine. And you're going to find out. I'll let them explain it. This is a uh, Phoebus Medea. Hello, Phoebus, are you there? Hey, yes, this is Phoebus Medea. How are you doing today? Oh, Medea, yes. It's, uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. How are you, sir? Doing quite all right myself. So, uh, yeah, I apologize for the dog barking in the background, but, yeah, I'm ready to uh, get into my little lecture about medieval medicine and uh, its application in the modern world during our pandemic today. Okay, great. I was just explaining to the viewers that you specialize in this older form of medicine. So you're saying it's medieval medicine. So yeah, why don't you take it away and tell us, tell us what you do. All right, excellent. Yeah, so I'm a professor of medieval medicine, natural remedies at a Bangor University in Wales. Um, so medieval medicine kind of has a stereotype of being pretty like superstitious and it's actually quite evidence-based. Um, so I'd like to bring to light this sort of forgotten wisdom that is uh, unfortunately been a bit displaced by modern medicine. All right, that sounds that sounds great. I was just complaining about modern medicine not a moment ago. Absolutely, absolutely. All valid complaints. So yeah, um, starting off, if we pull up that first picture that I have there of that fine looking man. Yeah, I actually have had it up because I nice. forgot to, yeah, okay, good. Excellent, so that is, uh, that is Gaius Galen. He was a Roman man and is sort of the, uh, the major figure in medieval medicine that lasted for over thousands of years. And um, he sort of took his first information from uh, a, a Greek scholar named Hippocrates, who's kind of known as the father of medicine. You know, you remember like the Hippocratical Oath. That's what doctors take. And he's More sort like of the did... Hippocritical Oath, am I right? With those modern doctors? Exactly. It is quite ironic, isn't it? But yeah, he, um, he took Hippocrates' study of something called the four humors. And this was sort of a, an understanding of four sort of elements that relate to the natural world. He applied these to medicine. And um, so yeah, Gaius Galen was a pretty cool guy. He experimented on monkeys thousands of years ago in Rome, um, encouraged his students to look at dead gladiators and stuff like that. And yeah, so the, the four humors, if we go to that next picture right there. Sure, sure. It's sort of the, uh, yeah. It's, it's the idea that everything is, is connected, right? So it might get what a are, what are What are humors? If you just right. humor me to tell me. Well, of course. So humors, uh, not not in the uh, the comical sense, but in the in the sort of basic element of everything. Everything's related. And uh, if we look around this wheel right here, we can see that we have the four classical elements, and then we have some fun words like choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic, and melancholic, which are temperaments that I'll get into a little bit later, and uh, all of that other stuff. So, so pretty much, it's, it's an imbalance and corruption of one of these humors is what creates illness, right? So that being said, looking at corona, what, what is the main symptom of coronavirus? Uh, you can't smell. Close. And it's, it's the coughing, right? Oh, Which yeah. Which is a, a component of, of, you know, air and not, not smelling. Like that's mm -hmm. also an air-related thing. Totally. So if we look at that air one right on the side, you can see a couple of very, very obvious connections, right? So look, the, the season is spring. Spring is when coronavirus hit America, hot and moist, much like a fever. Childhood, because children are the least at risk. Um, east, the, the direction, cardinal direction of east because it originated in East Asia. And if we look at the seasons again, Remember, remember what President Trump said? He, he said that by spring, summer, it ought to have cleared up you know, with the warm weather. Well, this is kind of him having that sort of natural human understanding of these humors, right? So he intuitively knew that the increase in the fire element that comes with the changing of the seasons is going to decrease the air element by decreasing the, the power of the coronavirus. Hmm. So 
we move on to the, the next image, we have a bit of a, a, a silly looking man with some astrology signs around him, right? Okay, I just want to say, you know, you, you're you're moving right along here. I I can't say that I understand what you're talking about exactly, but I'm I'm curious and I'm I'm I'm, I'm game. So you can just keep going. I just wanted to let you know that this is a bit confusing. Ah, uh, I apologize. East I'm, West. I'm what is it like? What does the direction have to do with? Like you're just. I'm sorry. Just continue. Continue. <laughs> No, it's quite all right. So I, I tried to explain. I guess it is a bit hard to, to grasp, but it, it's it, very esoteric. It's, it is. It, it, is it's, it looks. It appears to be borderline superficial and magical, but it is. It is all evidence based. You know, we can we can see these connections right here. Like here's a very an, an evident one. If we look at the astrology man, we see that the sanguine, the sanguinity, right? So this is the imbalance of the blood element, the the air element. So pretty much what coronavirus is, is this, this top right corner right here. So we see these astrological signs are Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, right? So we have statistical evidence that at least one person, really a whole lot of people in each of these zodiac signs have died from coronavirus, right? I, I, mean, I, I believe that I, that seems true. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to deny that much. It's not been part and of the appalling. CDC statistics, what the astrological signs are. They usually are focused on like comorbidities exactly. and age and stuff, but it is an interesting thing to analyze. It's very, it's very, there's a lot of effort in the wrong direction, if you ask me. Mm. But that being said, let, let's move on to the next image right here. Sure. So you have these, these four silly looking men right here. These and, men and look these very are, intelligent to me. It's just my first, my first, thought right here is like these are some doctors or scientists am i right or am i wrong um not exactly i mean you wouldn't be wrong in saying that these men do look intelligent but what this is supposed to represent is the four temperaments that have to do with the four humors hmm. so each one of these images represents a, an imbalance in one of the elements right so the, a temperament is the idea that oh not in the sense of the word that we use today but that there's a biological and a behavioral aspect to, to an imbalance, right? Mm -hmm. And if we know that, that uh, sanguinity is too much air, therefore too much blood, too much coronavirus, we can kind of see in the, the uh, sanguine, like what a typical coronavirus um, patient look like. I see. So but let me quiz you right here. Which one of these men looks most like President Trump? I think the top left to me. Top left? I don't blame you for that one. I, I would say, I think it's still applicable. It is very sort of on a spectrum. But according to my studies, it is a little bit more of the top right, the choleric. And that has a little bit to do with behavior. That was my second well, choice. Because, oh, absolutely. I, just, I, so, I, was, choleric, I was thrown off by the nose. It's kind of a you know, unique yeah, nose. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. So, so choleric is an excess of the fire element. And this has the behavioral aspects of ruling and dominance. Hmm. And it was because of this imbalance um, that I believe that he exposed himself to the virus. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we move on to the next image right here, uh, going back to astrology real quick, we can see those, those three signs right here have to do actually with the coronavirus symptoms. Uh, we have the Taurus on the head representing the, the headaches and the exhaustion. Um, or, I'm sorry, the Aries. The Taurus is on the neck obviously clearly the coughing and, and the trouble breathing trying to ex exhale that excess air and then we have gemini on the shoulder and i don't really know what that one means but we're going to go ahead and move on so and he's standing on go... standing on those fish is that uh, is that advised for people with coronavirus um if if the, the representation of pisces would have to do with an imbalance in the uh, let me just look back at my notes real quick. Pisces would be, uh, I don't see it on that, on that old picture right there. So I can't tell it uh, right now. It's but, like maybe um, if you st are stomping on fish, like maybe the coronavirus will get scared of you because you're like, you don't, because you're some you know sort what? of crazy freak who's like, I'll stomp on any fish to get this virus out of me. And the virus is like, you convinced me. Is that what it's sort of like? 
you know, you're not right. That is sort of the uh, uh, intrinsic human understanding of how to reestablish that balance in the humors. So by stepping on the fish, that is ter- totally perpendicular to the airy sign. Stepping on the fish is going to undo the, the head ailment, which is going to alleviate your headaches and stuff, to my understanding. All right, great. I mean, I'll, I'll keep that in mind in the future when I've got a headache. It's just find some fish. Absolutely. So moving on to the next image, we kind of have this uh, the understanding that people in medieval times understood illness to be a sort of miasma, you know, like foul What's air that? That is going to be what, you know, causes your illness. And, you know, obviously we still understand this to the day, but our practices and how to combat this are very backwards. Right, so wearing masks and stuff, and I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later, but wearing masks is kind of bunk. Really what they did to sort of displace this miasma was burning, right? Ah. So we take the, the high, you know, the areas with the high amount of cases, like say Manhattan, for instance. If we burn it, then we can displace all of that bad coronavirus air. That's a very no-nonsense solution, if you ask me. Absolutely. And, skip um, the, we skip the, the whole middleman. It's like this virus is perhaps going to kill a lot of people. What if, we, what if we just kill people and save the virus the trouble? Yeah, just expel all that virus air. That's by burning. That's much more preferable in my opinion. But if we look at that next image right here, we, we have this in our stereotypical practice of bloodletting. That and is a medieval. big arm on that woman. What's going on there? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so by is that, a, is that some sort of medieval ailment, big arm lady? <laughs> yeah, it could be, it could be. But the, the idea behind bloodletting is you're decreasing that blood humor, right? And the blood being related to air, by expelling all of this blood, we're decreasing the amount of air element in us and therefore decreasing the amount of coronavirus in us. And this is something I actually do myself. I, I practice bloodletting pretty regularly, and it's been working great for me. I mean, I, I like the look of this this image. You got like this this uh, sort of large armed woman who's letting her blood out into these little ramekins. Is that yeah. is is that something that uh, what do you do with the blood? If I may ask, is there anything um, some sort of I ritual you it, could perform? You could if you want. It's really up to the individual at that point. Um, the like blood that. is expelled at that point, so the, the good deed is done. What you do with the blood after that is, is really up to whoever. You could, you know, do some blood rituals with it, or, you know, you could just throw it out into the, into the yard with all the other fecal matter and stuff. But okay. uh, speaking right. of fecal matter, our, our next image right here is a, a, another practice that I do regularly as well. Oh, no. So, this is uh, a... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I actually, I, I read about this story on Facebook, so I don't have any primary sources for this, but I'm taking it out of face value. So during, during the Black Death in the late medieval period, um, obviously they, they knew that there was this sort of miasma aspect, but this man, this noble, um, he understood that the sort of idea of using, you know, beautiful air, you know, with like flowers and stuff, like the, the plague doctors used in their masks, he knew that was bunk. And he was like, all right, well, if this isn't going to work, what if I use foul air, like the burning? And he did that. So he took all of the fecal matter from his, uh, his lavatory and his estate, put it in a pot, and then he breathed in all of that fecal air until he vomited wow. in order to displace that black bed. And it worked, and he lived. Wow. And I follow in his footsteps. I do the same thing. That's so, that's amazing. I'm actually feeling a little nauseous just thinking about that. So maybe I, you know, he could have maybe skipped the, the the huffing of feces and just and just thought about it really hard because I feel like I could vomit right now just thinking about that. Excellent. I mean, that would be great. And this I'm looking at this that, picture. This is not. Air. It doesn't look like he's sniffing. It looks like he's chugging it. Yeah, I know. If, if worse comes, what's this guy doing? Vomit, What's this other guy doing? Is he churning the feces? What is going on here? Yeah, yeah, just sort of turning it into a, to a homogeneous mixture, you know, oh my getting God. a good balance of all the different uh, sorts of fecal matter in order to really make it effective. And yeah. this is this is on. this is yeah, of course. Please, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so this this is your your typical plague doctor. Everyone knows this what they look like and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Plague doctors Freaky are beaked mask. 
Could you just yeah. explain to us real quick, just for those who don't know what the hell this is? Right. So this is a plague doctor and therefore a total hack. So many of these doctors that were employed by the state during the Black Death were not actually real, you know, practitioners of medicine. They, a lot of them were like fruit sellers that lost their jobs and needed to be employed by the state. And so these were not evidence. these were not people like the feces huffers who were the true medical professionals. These people are 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 Oh yeah, they're 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 just superstitious. Not, they they didn't really ever offer any cures or anything like that. A lot of them were actually used more for for counting cases, you know, sort of the demographics and stuff of it. But um, their masks, right, those beak masks, they were filled with flowers hmm. in order to displace that sort of miasmic air. But it didn't work. It didn't work. They were fools selling fake remedies using fake methods of protection. And that's why I don't wear a mask, personally, right? There's evidence in the past that it's just ineffective. And that's why I use the previous methods. Um, well, I think that's... Them. Okay, well, first of all, I think that's fair. Like you said, this is this is evidence that masks don't do shit. Right. We had a plague. These guys were going around. They were obviously the uh, the crazies. Whereas you had the real professionals who are trying to tell people that the solution is in the feces if you just churn them long enough, and those people exactly. wouldn't listen. They were the ones that lived exactly. And um, I don't know how much. Uh, time I've gone over exactly so if you want me to keep going I can or if you need me to hop off I can do that as well we should wrap okay. it up it's not you it's it's the show is vastly behind schedule and it's my fault oh, don't worry about it but um, what are your last thoughts on here I mean what do you what I mean what do you think we should do then in this modern era should we use these old methods should we grab it should we should we uh, grab our feces should we step on some fish yeah, I mean, pretty much everything that I described previously. Um, you know, the moral of the story is by studying history. You know, you learn that what happened in the past what worked, what didn't. So you, history doesn't repeat itself, you know. So if, if we don't do what our forefathers were doing, we can expect coronavirus to last, you know, 200 years, you know, the same, same time as Black Death did. We need to use what our ancestors knew worked, right? Mm -hmm. there, people understood how to combat this, and after 200 years, it did go away. So there, there is hope. And, and you know, I want to. I should. I should say this because I think when people think of the the medieval period, you know, they're frequently called the Dark Ages, and there's sort of this whole we turn our nose up at the at the Middle Ages, who say, ah, those idiots. Those stupid fucking idiots with their goddamn feces huffing and like what the they're what the hell were they thinking? What the hell were they thinking? But clearly, we who think that are in the wrong, and I've been educated now, and I feel like our viewers will probably feel the same way. Like this, this method. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it yeah. makes sense, but there is some sort of intuitive feeling. Like you're talking about the directions and the and the elements and the weather and all that stuff. It's like I I yeah, yeah, yeah. I buy it. Absolutely. And yeah, the Dark Ages is definitely a misnomer. It it really was a time just like our time. And when you study history, you learn that like while culture and practices may change, people people don't change. Mm. And our our sort of conception of the, the Middle Ages is definitely skewed by modern media for portraying it as, as a backwards time. But really, each era is, is backwards and forwards in its own way. Why do you think that occurs? What, what is it about today and yesterday that, that we refuse to acknowledge that this is a just, valid thing? Right. We just kind of, as humans, we want to believe that where we are now is a sort of a, a peak, a peak of our our species and our knowledge and everything like that. Mm. And we want to use the past for, for our own methods. We want to use the past to, to justify the present. We want to look back on it nostalgically and look back on the heroic age when things were so much better, but really, really things really never do change. And it, it there's good and bad everywhere you go. And it, it's sort of the cycle of history that 
is all about that. So that, that is I absolutely part of why I study medieval medicine. Well, thank you so much for calling in Thebus Medea. This has been very enlightening. Uh, you don't you don't get this kind of information, folks. You don't get this on the mainstream media, like you just said. The mainstream media right. thinks that they're better than the Middle Ages, but here on this stream, we are equal with the Middle Ages. Absolutely. All right, great. Thebus Medea, thank you for calling in. Very Absolutely. appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Holy heck. We are... S Oh my god. I know it doesn't matter to anybody who's not looking at this schedule, but we are behind. It doesn't matter because you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but we're behind. Anyway, we haven't even taken a single break yet. I have to piss like I can't even believe, so we're going to do that right freaking now. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, the show's got <laughs> three more hours left. at home enjoying your favorite sitcom when all of a sudden you're thrown in a deep state of existential dread well buddy this is now a problem of the past with ovisericrone take one before breakfast one before lunch and before you know it you'll be back to your old consumer self warning ovisericrone may cause side effects such as dizziness nausea migraine diarrhea vomiting total organ failure and dry skin Stop taking if you begin to have suicidal thoughts, euphoria, or oneness with the universe. Do not take Ovisericrone if you're allergic to mercury, arsenic, or cats. Ovisericrone, the future of consumers.
we are back again. Okay, I I've, I've, I feel like we've been we've been racing through some stuff. I wanted this to be a this nice and chill vibe, but I drank this whole monster and it's it's, it's making me wild, man. It's making me aggressive. I want to chill, dude. But I can't. <laughs> I'm all wound up. All right, anyway, we're in the 7 o'clock hour now. I can't believe we've been doing this for an hour and 10 minutes. Last time on the show, back in March when we did the, the first Chronicast, there was there was a lot of issue with the testing. There weren't enough tests around. People couldn't get tested. Only the, the wealthy got tested or some shit. I don't know. Anyway, because of that, we, we, we had to make our own test. And we did that with some ketone strips. I was looking for pH strips at the time, but I couldn't find them. Litmus paper. Ugh. I asked the people at CVS. They didn't even know what the hell I was talking about. Goddamn people. Um, so I got these instead, these ketone strips. Ketone. And I called them ketone on accident on the first strip, the first stream. But they are ketone test strips. Ketone. Sounds like a like a backup band. Like Jerry Barbarian and the ketone strips. Okay, anyway, this is what they look like. Last time on the stream, I sort of stuck it in my ear and put it in my nose and flossed my teeth a little bit with it. And we determined that I, you know, I was... The ketone strip came up negative. I ended up thinking I was, I was corona positive because of uh, the written portion of the test which we took, which I failed. And that was a that was a false positive. It turned out that was bad turkey. We already established that. But now we've got these uh, these ketone strips. I was reading it a little. I was reading it carefully. It says for in vitro diagnostic use only. And I don't know what that word vitro means. But I've got a pretty good idea. And I've also I know for pretty certain that I do not have. A vitro. You know, I've got I've got an outro. I've got an out hole, and there is no way, no way, I'm sticking one of these in my out hole. That's that's against the rules. We don't do that, ever. That's the whole point of the out hole. Is things come out. You don't go in. It's not right. It's unnatural. Anyway, you know, I guess, yeah, whatever, I, I don't know. That's, That's not, not what in vitro means. Okay, Rob, genius, what does, all right, fine, what does in vitro mean then? In vitro is Latin for within the glass. When a test is performed in vitro, it happens outside of a living organism. If it were inside, it would be called in viva. Okay, cool. In viva, huh? Hey, how many how many vivas have you gotten into, Rob? You kind of seem like you prefer it in the glass, you know what I mean? Oh! You like it in the glass, Rob? You stupid son of a bitch. What do you got to say to that? That's what I thought. Where do you even learn this dumb shit? College. Okay, I probably should have. I should have assume that all right so anyway rob's right probably you know he, uh, who cares who cares if he's right this is the point of this test though is that you're supposed to piss on it this is a piss test so i used it incorrectly last time and i'm going to use it correctly this time i'm going to but i'm not going to piss on it because i i believe that piss and pee like as a verb is that's like uh, not allowed on the internet and stuff. Like that's a sexual thing. Peeing is bad, is questionable. But piss, the noun, the, the 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 liquid, that's just like you know, biology or chemistry. You know, that's a science. So you said in the glass, right, Rob? Well, look at this. No reason we can't be fancy about it. Here's a glass. 
I just got to, uh, maybe I can play some of the music during this that I failed to play during the earlier break. Here we go. I didn't piss before. I said I was going to piss. I saved it for this. good ah damn weird funky smell to it Woo! Uh, all right so here's the piss just put that there by the way it's really hard to only do this much I really could have filled a few glasses it says here 15 second test time, but I think that's a bunch of bullshit. So just to be safe, we're going to leave it there for pretty much the whole show. So this is piss. This is my testing strip in there. We're going to find out again, you know, if I have coronavirus, because it's important to test frequently to make sure you don't have it. You know? So this is uh, how we're going to figure that out. All right. It's a good thing these are in different glasses. Okay. I've got someone who's going to be on the line now here. It's, this is um. This is another expert. This is kind of an expert's expert. Uh, he's, so you might not know him. His name is Borges, uh, Borges Jorgen. Borges Jorgen. And I've got him on the line here. And uh, Borges, Borges? How are you, uh, Borges? Are you, are you there? Uh, what is that, by the way, Borges? Is that Polish or something? No, it's Borges. Oh, okay. It's, okay. Well, Borges, uh, maybe Borges. you Borges. Could... My name is Borges, but the name is Borges. Okay. Well, uh, sir, it's great to talk to you. It's great to have you on the show tonight. Um... Now, I understand that you are an expert in this field. You get updates a lot about the coronavirus. You may have been listening to the show earlier, and I was kind of talking shit about the virus and maybe making it making it not seem like such a big deal. And I have a feeling maybe you, you disagree. Maybe you don't think I'm, I'm correct about that. Well, I think you're absolutely right uh, in that I disagree wholeheartedly. Right. I think we can still beat this thing. It just comes down to informing and educating the public. We have to constantly educate the public about what we are learning about this virus, because we are learning more about it every day. I get updates on this virus up to the minute. Up to the minute? Wow. Uh, that's impressive. What did you learn about the virus one minute ago? That we're frigged. That we're frigged, for one. That we're totally, utterly frigged. You understand this word? I mean, this, this virus is more contagious than that crazy frog video. You know? Oh, you know yeah. the one? More mm -hmm. contagious than the contagious laughter that one laughs while watching the crazy frog video. It's madness. And yeah, that, that, that was a, a viral video. Exactly. Yeah. But, but, you know, at the same time, is it really, is this virus that serious? I mean, people are getting angry that people are going to the beach and stuff. Can you get it at the beach? You can get it at the beach. You can get it from the water, from the sand. The wind picks it up from the waves. I'm not even going to talk about the lifeguards. 
You going to the beach in these times of COVID is literally as bad as this is if you slept inside someone says COVID. You understand? As if they opened up their giant mouth and you could somehow climb inside them and camp out for the night. That's what it would be like if you if you went to the beach. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. You're gonna, get it. Mm. You're gonna die. Okay. Well, I, you know, you know, I do think I do feel like I'm gonna get it. I do. But am I gonna die? Me? Am I? Do I have anything to worry? Be worried about? Six hundred million Jews and gypsies died in the Holocaust. That number will be dwarfed. Dwarfed. When this is all said and done, nobody will ever talk about the Holocaust again. The Holocaust will be a reminder of how good we used to have it back when just the Jews and the gypsies were dying. Mm. This is about everybody, you see, mm -hmm. except the wealthy. Except the wealthy. Obviously, the wealthy are going to be fine. Obviously, I'm just talking about the poor, poor communities, the poor, poor commoners, the common filth. They, they are the freed. They are the most freed among us. The <laughs> freed and damned. Yes. Yeah, 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 right. Well, okay, that, that, that's sort of an interesting point, Borges. But, uh,. You're kind of going a little. This is getting going a little sideways. I don't know if I. I, I, I might have to cut you off. Hundred million Jews. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're just gonna call it there. Thank you, Borges. That was a nice. That was nice. But um, I don't want to get into a whole Holocaust thing. That wasn't my choice. That was Borges. All right. Seven twenty-one. All right. During the past six months. That we have been off the air. People have, if you remember from the last show, there's a call-in portion. So the audience can call into the show. We're going to be doing that in this show. I had to skip the first one because holy heck, I'm doing a, I'm doing a bad job keeping us on schedule. But I'm going to do better now. I'm feeling good. I'm getting just the right amount, the right ratios of liquids. It's, it's happening now. I actually need a, one more beer in, in this quart container and I'll be perfect. But... Uh, People were calling into the last show. While we've been off the air, I have continued to get calls. Practically nonstop. And there are hundreds of voicemails in this Google Voice account. And so I figured on the on the Chronicast 2, I would just play a few of them. I mean, I, I haven't listened to these, but I'll just pick them at random. So here's here's one right here. Oh, uh, hey, my name is uh, Jack McStackerson, longtime fan of the show. Uh, not so recently, I was diagnosed with corona, uh, probably from the large amounts of macaroni and cheese I've been eating, with the chance of the rona receding or depleting fleeting, leading me to roam the rona road, not alone, but with a growing number of corona cronies such as myself. And I'd just like to say from the corona community, thanks for keeping us all corona positive. You're welcome, sir. I that was nice. You know, it's good to see someone taking that sort of positive stance on the virus. I'm corona positive. Uh and it seems to have given you some sort of latent rhyming abilities or something. There was something going on there that was that was interesting what was happening. Here's another one. Hey guys, I gotta whisper really low because my neighbors are home at 1 p.m. on a Monday for some reason. But guess what? I've got Corona and I'm gonna spread the love. I'm gonna spread the love on doorknobs, toilet seats. I'm gonna go to the candy aisle in the supermarket. I'm gonna <coughs> put the wrapper back on. You know what I'm saying? It's spreading the love, man. It's their problem now. Corona Cast 2 2020. Let's go. Again, you know, I agree. I happen to agree. If you get Corona, that's the thing to do, you know? If you don't want to get Corona, if you're so uh, scared of getting Corona, just don't go, don't ever leave your house. Don't ever leave your house again. Build a bunker, go underground, stop talking to everybody. But if you do get Krona, live life to the fullest. Live life to the max. And that's an order. Here's another one. Hey, huge fan of the show. I was just had a question about getting back into social life. I've kind of been quarantined for a while. Um, so you know like when you do something for someone and they say thank you? What do you say after that? Like what like what do I 
what what do I respond with? I just I need a refresher. Um, if you could if you could let me know, I, I appreciate. It. Oh yeah, and also if you could not play this on your show, that that'd be that'd be great. All right, okay. Thanks, man. Well, okay, that was a mistake that last part. But um, what I do when people say thank you to me, I usually say yes. Uh, keep going. Um, anything else you'd like to talk about? Anything else you'd like to say? Sometimes I'll just do this. I'll just say, oh, you're so thankful, then maybe that's me, you know, but I think that could work for you. All right, moving on. We'll come back to audience voicemails a little bit later. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to it a few times. Now, we're going to move on to something else here. This is, this is a game. This is a game that you can play. All right, we're going to play it together. It's called Spot the Infected Person. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. All right, who's got Corona? Who's got Corona? A, B, C. You have one second to decide. <gasps> Who's got Corona? A, B, C. I forgot to guess last time. This time I'm going to say B. Yeah. Oh, shit. Who's got Corona? Okay. Okay. This is, uh, this is, okay. It's got to be A. It's got to be A. It's got the least muscle. Yeah. Okay. We're on medium mode. Who's got Krona here? All right, definitely not C. That dude's rad. Definitely not A. That guy is psycho. It's got to be B. Damn it. Damn it. All right, we're on hard mode. Who's got Krona? A, B, C. They're all old. One is a, 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 a soccer player with a cane, and one is a regular dude, and one's got a wheelchair. I'm going to say the soccer dude because it's, I think it's more likely that he got Corona in a soccer match between all the old people. Yeah! Exactly, the ball. All right, who's got Corona? Who's got Corona? Old lady with a cane, old fella with a fun stance, sort of a... Okay. A. Uh, you know what? This, the, the look at this A lady. She looks like she's hiding something, and I think that she's hiding that she has coronavirus. <laughs> Fuck! Shit! What about his knees? Gives him corona. I should have known. How well did you do? How well did you do? If you guessed correctly on all of them, you are eligible for nothing in particular. All right. Okay, good job, everybody. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yep, yep, okay. <laughs> Fuck, okay. Good job, everybody. I did pretty well, but uh, hopefully you did better than I did. I got stiffed a few times on that. It was a bunch of bullshit, in my opinion. But it was, it was also fair at the same time. All right, we're going to be moving on. We're taking a break again. When we come back, we're we'll doing the zine giveaway, so send me those emails. You know, send me the, If you sent me an email like a half hour ago, I'm not gonna, that's not going to be the one that I get. Send me an email now. Now. Because when we come back, free zine and stickers are coming up. Hey
class, style, Aventuri Deluxe 2020. Introducing our new breath pod system. Breathe the different airs of the world, all from the comfort of your hospital room. With pods like Swiss Alps, Southwestern Desert, and Beijing. The Venturi Deluxe Ventilator 2020. Breathtaking in its look. Breath giving in its function. hear something it sounds like the music that indicates that right now is a zine giveaway desk 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 who's gonna get it who's gonna get it off desk. Yo, oh shit. Oh, Yago B. Yago J A G O B. Jago Yago. Yago B! Gonna give you a magnet. 
Diego. And uh, if I'm saying your name wrong, sorry. Mmm, mmm, delicious. This is another international one, so I don't have the stamp for it. Who's next? It's gotta be do do Colin. You, you are gonna get this, Colin. You. This is the zine. And guess what, Colin? You. You is also gonna get this holographic sticker. Okay, Colin. You. Guess what, bro? You're gonna get fucked right now because you didn't put a zip code in there. So guess what? Where's that sticker? No. No. You're gonna get this sticker, which is fine, but it's not as good. And you... Just put the zip code. It's part of your address. Now you got me pissed, Colin. You. I explained the rules, I made it very clear, you must include your zip code. And your address is literally upside down. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why, are you, why is it in ascending order instead of descending order? What the hell are you doing, Colin? Ugh, this is the most retardedly formatted address I've ever seen. I gotta look up your address so I can find your zip code. You really fouled up my mood, Colin. I made it very clear that you have to include the zip code and you you really biffed it up. You really, really could have made a great impression. You're about to get the the goddamn holographic surprise and here it is, this, this ridiculous address. It's upside down. <sighs> Colin, you. Colin, you. Oh, what a headache. Okay, that was the zine giveaway. We're still doing that. We're gonna do that every hour, no matter what. No matter how far behind we get, the zine giveaway stays in. All right, there's other stuff I'm supposed to be doing, but we haven't done any audience call-in stuff yet, so we're gonna do it now. It's the audience call-in portion. Check this out. If you are watching this stream, oh, hold on. Let me turn off do not disturb mode. Okay, if you are watching the stream, you may call this number that appears on screen, 518-288-7938. Call in. Talk to me. Talk to me. About Corona, about whatever you want. Uh. Uh. Whatever you want to talk about. As long as it's not sexual. Okay, here we go. First call. Hello, you are on the Chronocast. You are live on air. How are you today? I'm great. My name is Jensen Graffis. I'm telling you right now, this Corona shit is great. I love all the stuff that they're talking about. Fantastic. Fantastic. Keep up the good work. That's what I want. I don't even want to wear a mask anymore. After what I heard, I'm going to go out and if I get it, fuck, you know it's going to be a great time, all right? So you're talking about the show right now? You're saying you're you're inspired to get out and, and get the Corona out? I mean, that would be the best way to spread it. I mean, that sounds like a good idea to me. Okay, so what about... Uh... Oh, shit. Your volume was a little bit down there, dude. Uh, so you were saying that you want to go out and give people the virus. How do you think you're... How do you plan to get the virus? Where do you want to go? So I'm planning on going into the forest and changing live deer because, you know, they never say anything about animals. I think animals are the fine factor of catching the disease. 
Uh, have you ever seen a deer? Because they make a very interesting noise, and I'm pretty positive if I go to one, I give it a little, uh, and I eat it, bone, I will actually get it. And if this is possible, but I think the only made it and, and just donuts and kill it instantly and eat its bone marrow. And then I can run off the virus. It'll, it's, it's times 10 at this point. Okay, okay, all right. So you're saying you're going to kill a deer, you're going to drink its bone marrow, and that's going to give you the virus because deer absolutely. have the virus? Deer absolutely have the virus. I have no doubt about it. Have you seen a lot of sick deer around lately? De deer are coming down. They're getting a little under the weather. You've noticed this? Yes, yeah, I noticed this. I go out in the forest every single hour. You've probably heard me uh, making strange calls, trying to instantly. So you're going Probably to, you know. So, <laughs> all right, all right. That sounds good to me. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get the virus from deer. I've not heard of that as a method at the, until now, but it sounds sounds like a method uh, of some sort. Then what? Tell us. Yeah. Tell us. You said you're going to walk out naked. Where Where are the crowds at today? In where you're living? Where are you going to? So I am currently in Lancer. There's some crazy stuff going down. The forests in Lancer are not really filled with deer, so I have to go somewhere. So I don't know if you're familiar with Blue Ridge. I'm not from Atlanta. There, it's it's very nice little set in this uh, this uh, state, and I'm going to go out there some pop some beer. I'm actually. You're cutting out a little bit. I didn't hear that last part. You're going to drink some beer and then what? Sir? Mister? I'm about to kill one live. Were you talking that whole time? Yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go kill a deer right now. So okay. Me <laughs> All right. Yeah, good luck to you, night. sir. You're going right, to kill a deer and drink it? All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay good good first call man's gonna kill a deer drink its bones and then uh get to work i'm all for it call in go ahead call in okay who's next call from to accept press one to send a voicemail hello Hello, you are on the Chronocast. May I ask who this is? This is Dalton Blump. Dalton Blump? Yes, sir. All right, Dalton, how are you doing today? Not bad, dude. How about yourself? I'm doing quite well. I'm I'm getting I'm in around five beer territory, so I'm actually feeling a lot better. Why did you call into the Chronocast today? I'm at five beers too, my guy. All right. That's, uh, that's global well, cheers. I don't know. You said call. I'm kind of drunk, so I called. I don't know. You got anything? Any? Any? Uh, anything you want to talk about? How are you feeling about Corona? How's it affecting you and your environment? Yeah, you know, fucking living in Ohio, not too much. I killed a deer the other week. I don't think it had coronavirus, but I can't be sure. The the guy we just positive. I don't I don't know if you were just listening, but the guy we just talked to seemed very convinced that deer deer had the virus inherently in the bone in their bones. Yeah, I'm not. I, I think he's full of shit. I'm not too sure. I'm not a doctor, but Me I'm not either. too sure about that. That's the problem. It's like I don't want to <laughs> call people out. I don't want to be like you're full of shit because I'm full of shit, and I don't want to. You know, I'll, I'll just have one person be full of shit. That's plenty of shit. Oh, we got we got two people on the phone right now for shit. Definitely. Hey, right now, right now, I, I feel I feel like we're talking honest. We're talking bro to bro, man to man, right now. This doesn't feel like shit to me. Uh, I'd say I uh, say I agree on that one, but you know, not too much. I don't. I don't really right, know what's so, going on with Corona. I don't well, think it's it, a real. Is I, it, I don't know if it's real or not. How is it? How is how is the how's the reaction then affecting your life? Maybe you've not come across the coronavirus in day-to-day -day life, which I certainly haven't. I haven't known anybody, even tangentially. Just I've never known anybody who's a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. I don't know anybody who's gotten it, because uh, I'm not friends with 70- and 80-year-olds living in nursing homes. 
but I have felt the a lot of the effects of the virus, not the virus itself, but just the reaction to it. So how's your life going in regards to that? Things changed? Uh, Not a whole lot. I mean, I got to wear a mask when I go into work. It's kind of annoying, but about it. Where do you work? What's your job? I I test tires for a living. Okay. That seems like a mask would be the top priority in that sort of field. Meh. Because tires are full of air, and air is what spreads the coronavirus, if I'm not mistaken. That is true. We could be selling tires full of uh, corona. That's, uh, I don't know, I don't know, man. That's why you wear the mask, right? To, to, to let the customers know that's not <laughs> happening. We are not blowing your tires up with corona air. We've, we're safe here. I don't know. Uh, corona might be better, like more uh, atmospherically stable. So it might be better to fill them up with corona. I'm not sure. Hey. Now you're thinking outside the box. Let me yeah, ask you this: Who? Nitrogen who, grow might be better. So was it, do you do you um do you know like where this order came down from? Was it just your boss just said, "Hey, we're all wearing masks now. That's just the way it is," or was there like did he get an email from uh, the CDC that was like, "Yo, you got to wear a mask, Mister Tire Dude." It's, it's all corporate, dude. I don't know. I don't. Uh, uh, I don't try to get into that. I just do what I'm told. I'm a dumb person. I hey represent. I know what you mean. <laughs> uh yeah. So well, that's interesting, man. Like you've got to wear a mask <laughs> to protect the tires and yourself. To protect I'm... the tires from you and you from the tires. <laughs> Yeah, that's about it, man. <laughs> what else is going on, dude? How's uh, how's uh, you you getting a lot of takeout now? You cook on your own. What do you do for food? Uh, I don't really. Uh, you know, just wait. Well, you don't eat. Was that what you were about to say? What the hell are you talking about? I mean, I don't, I don't eat a whole lot, but I mean, can't fucking pass up hot pockets. Oh, you're a hot pocket man. My goodness. Are you? Are you a? <laughs> are you a young dude? Are you under the age of twenty two? 23. Dude, nah, you got to quit those hot pockets, man. 22 is the last year. <laughs> that's the last year that's allowed. Your body is... How can you eat hot pockets now? Don't Doesn't your body just scream no? How, how can your body scream no to a hot pocket, dude? They're so delicious. It's not while you're Jeez, eating. Dude. It's not while you're eating it. It's later. No, nah, dude, I do fine, dude. It's easy. My beer, my <laughs> body doesn't like all the beer, but shit, I mean, hot pockets are nothing. Compared to like eight years. You're totally right, man. All right, well, good. I used to eat. I used to eat a shit ton of hot pockets, and I uh, I haven't I haven't had them in years. But uh, I see them. At, no, dude, I see them at the store, and I I I I get I get feelings. I get I get that old forgotten <laughs> feelings. You know what I mean? Where like I remember I remember heating up them hot pockets. Let me ask you this: Do you ha- do you do the microwave? Oh, well, how else do you cook a hot pocket? How okay, well, I was about here. Yeah, I'll tell you right now: the microwave is great for hot pockets. Obviously, it seems built for it. They got the little sleeve, the microwavable yeah. metal, whatever that sleeve is that helps along. But have you ever had a hot pocket in a toaster oven? Ooh, I, I don't own a toaster oven. I wish no, I practically did, nobody does at this point. They're they're no. they're almost obsolete. And the toaster oven is almost it's useless, but this is one of the one of the occurrences where a toaster oven is a great thing if you toast, because it's like a toaster and a microwave. I was gonna say a toaster and an oven, but those are basically the same thing, really. I mean, an oven's just a big yeah. toaster. Yeah, but you get small. the best of both worlds. You get some crispiness on the outside that you don't. It's hard to get with the microwave. That is true. Dude, I fucking bought a toaster two weeks ago, and it broke today. <laughs> nice. It broke today. It's Was a, that? It's a two-week-old toaster, and it fucking Damn. broke. Damn, dude. Did you get it at, like, a yard sale or an estate sale? No. I got it from, uh, where was I? Uh, like, Walmart, Meyer, somewhere like that. But it fucking broke. No, nice. Now I gotta go out tomorrow and return a toaster. What's broken? What's broke? You plugged it in, and now it just, it just doesn't work? Or what's, is it, does it heat too no, much? Uh, like that. The thing you, I do, I probably use it like 20 times in two weeks. Like, no, not even that. Probably like 10 times in two weeks. And like the thing you pull down, it, it doesn't, 
it doesn't stay down. It just pops right back up. Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> toast is done. <laughs> we finished. Yeah, We're instantly like, toasted. Oh, yeah. Dude, it sounds like you're you're going through the shit right now. It's a really hard life for me right now, man. God damn. Well, thank you for calling in. It was great talking to you. Sure. What was your name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Dalton. Dalton. Dalton, it was great talking to you. Thank you for calling in. I wish you the best of luck with your, your tire job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep those tires safe for all of us. I will try. Can I say one more thing before we uh, hang up? Yeah. Uh, your uh, video self-defense class is the most amazing, insane thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Thank you. Thank you. It came directly from the heart. <laughs> All right, dude. Have a good night. All right. See you, dude. Dalton calling in. We got time for one more call. So if you're calling in, I got I see a, I got a call from, where'd it go? Gomer's Wine and Spirits. <laughs> Gomer's Wine and Spirits, if you're out there, call back. I'll try to get you on there. All right, here's someone else. Call from... DJ Ethanol. To accept, press 1. To send a voice... DJ Ethanol, you are on the Corona cast. Oh, are... shit, I made it. What's up, man? You did it, dude. How's it going? Oh, man, I am... I'm just fine, man. You sound amped. <laughs> yo, you sound amped as hell. Yeah, yo, let me let me tell you, man. Yo, the the best shit about this whole Corona shit. Um, I said shit twice. I should use a different vocab word. But uh, yo, the the best thing about it is zero fucking accountability. Let me mm. tell you, man. So I, I'm I'm in college right now, and mm. so they have this thing called pass fail. So basically, if you fail the class, it doesn't go on your GPA. So basically, oh. that means you have no accountability for anything. And let me tell you, you don't want to go into work on Monday. <laughs> Hi, boss. Uh, my grandma got corona, and uh, my dog has cancer. I'm sorry, I can't make the Zoom call today. <laughs> Yo, but seriously, seriously, let me tell you, I've been, I've been high since day one. I've been <laughs> in my room, fucking stoned, whipped, drunk, tweet. There's not a single moment I haven't been massaged by chemicals because there's, there's nothing else to do. You, you you don't have to like go in front of people. You're not accountable for anything. It's actually the most amazing time to be alive in human history. You don't have to do anything. And Dude, it's marvelous. That is, that is 100% correct. And I've noticed that, uh, just in, in every, every place that I've gone, it's like everything is operating at 50%. Because everyone can just blame all their their slowness and shittiness on the virus. They just be like, "Well, I can't do that. I can't help you out, sir, because I got this mask on, and I don't want to get too close." This is like the perfect environment for, mm -hmm. uh, like total shit heads to just g live their wildest fantasy. And I am, at heart, one of those shitheads. So I'm not uh, meaning that in a in a aggressive way i think it's a good thing okay i mean listen the the, the thing is this is the, the best time in history to just sort of do whatever you want to do can you imagine what do you want to like, do I, I don't i don't have to i don't have to do anything right now you no, know but, I'm, a, I'm a student i'm not, what do you I'm, I'm not on the hamster wheel you know but what do you want to do? What what's what are you going to use this time for? How are you gonna what are you gonna launch in this period? You know, aside from rampant hedonistic pursuits, mm -hmm. uh, I think this would be a time to also set aside and work on some more serious things. I've I've um I gotta I gotta thank you for making a mid hour because um a lot of that has inspired me to you know sort of get off my ass and produce something. You know, even if it's just a silly little cartoon or something, just make something, leave something behind, you know. But aside mm -hmm. from that, I think I should be uh, putting more into intellectual pursuits. What? You know, I mean. What? You no, know, because I, 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 wa I want to be an engineer. But, you know, since school laid out, I've been a serious fucking lazy ass, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I should be uh, focusing more and getting ahead while I can because... 
sure as hell and no more jobs are coming out, so I might be fucked well, I would, for everybody. I would, uh, yeah. I mean, personally, I would say uh, fuck engineering, fuck doing anything that is was previously regarded as important in society because society is not going to be the same. We are changing, brother. And guess what? You, if you make cartoons and shit, that's about a hundred million times more valuable than building a bridge in the modern day. Oh, well, how so? I mean, the bridge will last longer than your cartoon. No, 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 because people don't want to use bridges. They don't want to go outside anymore. People are done with that. They want everything ordered and they want it delivered directly to so the fucking saying... door. They need, they need time. They have nothing but time. They need entertainment. Entertainment is the most valuable commodity in the world right now because people are lazy and have nothing to do and they don't want to go outside anymore. They're done with the outside. They want to live inside. They want to go underground and be connected to the internet 24-7. So if you're in entertainment, you have infinite value to all of those people in the world. Whereas if you build a bridge, who gives a shit? Nobody's going to use that bridge. Well, I'd argue the differ, but although it may take a little while, I don't want to block any callers. But uh, I don't know. I just called in to be, make it funny originally, but then you got serious, so I got serious. <laughs> so I don't know. You can you can go ahead. Explain to me. Talk to me. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, because you want to say that entertainment is more valuable than uh, practical things. I I am well aware of the value of art. I am well aware of the value of music, but. You got. You can't argue that you know the things around you make a difference. For example, the house you're in, the uh, street you live on, the uh, food you buy from the supermarket that was built by engineers. All of it that allow you to you know live this comfortable life and you know just enjoy things on the internet for a living. You know, and yes. uh, you can't you can't ignore what's real. But. We can, as a whole, like society, we can ignore, and we uh, do only, only because of the engineers that. Uh, but what about put one when brick on top of the other? What about all the millions and millions of times? What about the AI engineers? What about the upcoming sweeping? You talking about the ones who um, develop AI for computers that wouldn't exist were it not for semiconductor engineers? Hey, it's a great thing. All right, all right. Now hold. On. Oh, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is both. They're, they're, they're two halves of the world we live in. One can't exist without the other. Nobody would be encouraged to build anything if it wasn't for artistry and something to live for. And, but vice versa, artistry and something to live for couldn't be created if we didn't have the foundation of our society. I agree with that. I, I 100% agree with that. I When I was being aggressive about engineers and how useless they are, I was meaning that in the... I was bringing the the average idiot viewpoint into the conversation here, which is, you know, more or less what I have. But to me, those things are incredibly valuable. I like the real world. I like living in the real world. I like to go to places, to buildings, and buy stuff in a building and bring it back. I like to look at things. And, uh, you know, I like living in the actual earth. But I am not like everybody else there are lots of people like me of course but like the the shift that i see happening is that people don't want to go outside they don't want that anymore they want to just be on their phone and be on the internet and not have to think about anything i agree with what you're saying about though the reason that that's even possible is because of mm -hmm. what we've built thus far yes i think the um you know i had something in mind a second ago but was I? I was going to say something. Well, I think I remember part of it. Okay, so, you know, a friend of mine once told me, and it's something I've come to understand, is that, you know, let's say a couple of years ago, when I wanted to get into heavier shit after I learned about weed, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, psychedelics were a thing where you just, you know, you pop it and it's like candy and it's like cartoons everywhere. Oh my God, immediately, right? Mm -hmm. But um, something that... um. Something I didn't understand was that it doesn't really do that. Like, yes, you do get some sort of, like, as some people might say, fractal shit or whatever. But for the most part, it just warps what's already there. 
And in the best case, in, in the worst case, you're going to scream and lose your shit and end up in the hospital. But in the best case, you sort of have a better appreciation for what's already around you. And I think that's what's cool about being an engineer is because, you know, we take most of what's around us for granted. But if you actually really take a second to, you know, sort of explore what went into maybe just the light bulb that you're putting in your ceiling, it's actually quite incredible. Even maybe just the, the soil for growing plants and, you know, the, the chemical engineering that goes into, you know, the right blend of nutrients or whatever to uh, promote flower growth or whatever. It's, it's absurd, the world we live in. And I think that's what we should be looking more deeply at. Now, oh, dude, I, I, I really do agree with you 100%. I, I do apologize for like shitting on your whole profession. I was, I was, I was trying to make this point. I I feel like I've I've dealt with people who are thoroughly vicious and uh, malevolent. I truly don't feel that way. I'm used to dealing with brutes. So this is actually refreshing. Okay. Well, I want you to know that I truly don't feel the, the, the way that I was callously uh, acting a few moments ago. I do appreciate engineering I mean, I, I'll, I'll shit on anybody who majors in liberal arts regardless, but, I mean, you know, engineering is more of a respectable profession, I'd argue. That's, I think that's totally valid. All right, mm-hmm. my dude, it was great talking to you. Great talking to you, man. Thank you for calling in, DJ Ethanol. I went in a bad direction there. I just went right off the rip. I said, fuck you, fuck your job. I was wrong. I didn't even feel that way, and I said that. What's wrong with me? God damn it. We got another call here, but we can't take it. We can't take it right now. We got to move on. We got to go to a break. Holy hell, I'm turning on do not disturb mode. We will get back to the calls in approximately one hour. Right now, we are going to a break. Dapper Plus. Dapper Plus. Dapper Plus is a premium community service. It's just like the old Dapper, except everything is better. You can still buy clothes, post pictures of yourself looking great, tell others who aren't looking great that they aren't looking great, and getting them looking great by buying clothes. Dapper Plus. You look dapper.
the grocery store I'm in the aisle looking at some corn I turn to my right and what do I spy Put a beautiful half of a face I'm stuck here standing in place Imagining the beautiful bottom half of your face With those eyebrows so plucked and refined Now and guess what? I love the size of the gap between your eyes It's not too wide And I imagine that the bottom half of your face is probably fine Your bottom half looks like a yak. What's going on there? Keep the mask on. Keep the mask on. You look like a yak, lady. Has your loved one been taken by the global pandemic? We were together for 57 years. Are you having trouble finding love during the lockdown? She wouldn't stop coughing. Find love again. With COVID Companionship. A new dating service for those who lost love to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are back. This has been, uh, this has been fun. This never goes down. I've been drinking this the whole show, but it just it keeps refilling. What the heck's going on here? Honestly, I feel like this monster was a bad choice. It's putting me in this head zone, head space where I, I want to attack. I'm on the attack. I'm like a shark. I smell blood on everybody. And I just want to, I want to attack. And I'm angry. But I'm not, really. I want to be, I want to, I want to be tipsy, but I'm angry. You're not supposed to be angry when you're tipsy. That's, that, 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 that defeats the whole purpose of being. So anyway, I'm going to keep drinking. We've got another, uh, expert calling in. This is another pre-scheduled, uh expert someone who i found on the internet this is an expert in working from home his name is sid ansel uh he's 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 working from home now is obviously this big thing that's occurring this this sort of shift and sid ansel's going to tell us all about it hello sid are you there yeah yeah hey man how you doing I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing, you know what? I'm doing great. And part of the reason for that is, is I'm home. You know, I, 
I, I'm at home and I'm working, you know, right now. Right now I'm doing I'm doing the work. And you know, I don't gotta be in a suit, I don't gotta be in a tie. I mean whatever I want. And I'm just working. It's great. Absolutely I, great. I mean, hey, that 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 sounds like a big improvement, I guess, over your your old work situation. You had to wear a suit and a tie to work? Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of a funny story. Um you know, I was. I was doing the grind, 9 to 5, show up to work 15 minutes early. You know, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. All that, all that, that bull, ho- bull hockey, all that. But now, you know, they, I, I got put on working from home for a couple of reasons prior to the whole, the whole pandemic, what have you. Oh. And, uh, you know, back in the day, it was kind of weird. You know, it's like, what, are you pregnant or you got a restraining order? Like, what's up with you and HR? All that. But now... I don't got to answer any of those questions, you know. I, 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 it turns out I was ahead of the curve. And, you know, even after everything went down with the company, you know, I'm, I'm still working from home, and it's great, you know. Um, it lets me just, uh, you know, just vibe and, uh, and get work done at the same time. So you got a head start on this whole working from home craze. You did it before it was cool, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you, said you're um, working, you said you're working right now? Yeah, I'm working right now. Well, I'm multitasking, you know. I can I can multitask in all sorts of numbers of different ways. Just uh, you know, I'm doing this interview. I'm uh, I'm 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 I've got some other projects in the the pipeline. You know, I'm taking care of chores. You know, it's the whole it's the whole thing. You know, I, I, there's it, it never stops. The workday, you know, you know, and weaker world people might not enjoy that. You know, the idea of having the like just constantly be on the entire time but uh for me it's great i love it i love it are you i hear are you vacuuming or something right now is that uh, oh yeah no sorry i um that's actually my uh my wife uh god god bless her uh, baby i'm on i'm on a work call right now with a co-worker could you you turn it down for a minute Did you i'm just yeah, I'm, I'm sorry let me see if i yes, um no that's totally I, uh, fine uh, my 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 house doesn't have doors, so you know it's a little tricky sometimes. So oh. fine, I'm fine. That you know the noise doesn't bother me. You know I'm used to the noise, uh, but uh, you know whatever it is, what it is. Um, but yeah, I thought maybe I could talk about some of the perks, some of the things that I've come to realize with regards to like what's uh, what's good with working from home. You know, there's a lot of things that I think people turn it into this big awful thing that you're forced to do, but you know, break- you're gonna have to do that. Right? Really Sid. Sid, you're breaking up a little bit. I, what is what is that sound? Um, baby, come on! I'm trying to do a thing right now. Come on! Oh, wives, am I right? Yeah, better yeah, have. I wouldn't know that. Uh, so okay, but you're telling me that working from home is great. You can do all these different things at once. So, uh, what what the company that you work for? What are they? What are they requiring from you while you work at home? Does it feel like similar well, to the workload you had while you're on the job, or is it more or less? Well, well, you know, it's 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 more so. I'm self-employed right now, so it's even more perfect for me because you know before with the suit, the nine to five, all that. Um, I don't have to do that anymore. I you know I don't I I dress wear whatever I want. That's one of the perks. So you know, what is, you can dress what, however you want, whatever you want. You can wear nothing if you want to. You know, my wife isn't comfortable with me being naked in the house all the time. But I, I you know, so I have to make compromises there. But, you know, even then, I throw on, I throw on some sweatpants, you know. Um, I don't got a shower. You know, hygiene, or like body hygiene, you know, when you're working from home. It's great. It's great. So you're working from home, but you're self-employed. So what is it? Yeah, yeah. What, is, what is it exactly that you are doing? What is your work? Well, you know, I, I'm basically right now is I'm, I'm doing, um, dude, come on, seriously. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, I love Your her. wife likes a clean, clean house, it seems. She's, she's very clean. Yeah, yeah, you know, she, she, you know, it's, it's, it's great being with your loved ones, but sometimes, uh, and you, you know, your loved ones, that's one perk right there besides the, you know, wearing whatever you want. Um, you get to spend time with your loved ones and, you know, that can be your, 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 family, your, your, any partners you may or may not have, um, or your dogs, you know, I love my dogs, and you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm married to one, as a matter of fact. Oh, dear. Is that yeah. something you want to say is, live on the Chronicast that will be recorded? Uh, I mean, it's too uh, late. You know, now. she's, 
Uh, yeah, you know, we have an understanding. Isn't that right, baby? You know, you, you go and, uh, you go up to your, to your work and then, you know, I get to stay. It's great. It's so she, you she's, she's, so she's a dog. Me. She's a dog. You're a dog. You're both happy. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Another perk you can do is, uh, really helpful is, um, uh, you, you know, uh, you can do so you sleep, you know, when you sleep, when you wake up, when you go to bed. I, for example, you know, I've got this, this rhythm of mine where I go to bed 4 a.m., wake up bright and early, ready for the work day at noon, get in, do 3 to 11 p.m. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that could really benefit from this sort of thing. You know, really, That's... really um, just, get, you know, go for it, you know. Really, I think a lot of people could just benefit yeah. from that a ton. That's a very unique work schedule. That sounds, uh, I don't know, Japanese or something. Is that a... I, what's that noise there? Is that your wife again? Um, no, you know, I've got a couple of other projects in the work, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, like I said, right now I can, I can multitask and like, just like, you know, I got a couple of things I'm handling, I don't know how many things I'm sending out. But at the same time, I can, you know, I can work on, uh, I can talk to you, I can, uh, What's... I can do stories, you know? I... You know, I can be continuously be busy at, at all times. Sid. Um, and, you know, only you have like a block uh, on your back, just, you know, bitching and moaning at me. No, uh, why, where's my CPF? Hey, Sid. Whatever, you know I mean? Sid, I'm, I'm getting yeah. about, I'm getting about 20% of this. I'm getting about 80% oh, well, noise. What is second. that? What are what are you doing? Is that are you just rolling up a big bunch of plastic, or are you stomping on? Hey, you know, I, I you know I've been doing some home improvement lately. Um, I've been uh, you know just working, you know this. Uh, for example, if I was in a job, regular job right now, if I was um, employed in a normal manner, I could not be having this conversation with you, sending out emails to, to clients, as I like to call them. And handling some home improvement right now. You know, our, our window got blown out. It's real windy where I'm from. And, and, and the window got blown out. So, you know, I can come over here. And it's just there's no shortage of things I can do. It's fantastic. It's really great. Wow. So you, when you work from home, you, you don't spare a single second. When you, when you don't have work to do from home, you do work on your home. Yeah, exactly. Or just, you know, work with regards to your home, you know. For example, right now I'm 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 filling out a uh, a, um, a second mortgage on my home um, to try and like you know gives me some more liquid assets in terms of being able to uh, um, continue my uh, my current job paradigm, as it were. If that, you know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, yes, so you you're trying to get money. It seems like as as your job used to pay you money, but now you don't have it. So you are trying to get money in a different way. Is that what you mean? Well, you know, it's By just, work there's lots of opportunities. Yeah, there's lots of little opportunities to, like, you know, uh, uh, make it a little bit more interesting in terms of uh, trying to, uh, it's not just, it's not just paperwork, in and out and in and out. You know, you can go out, you can go to the soup kitchen and wait in line, or, or you can, uh, you know, you can go for a walk and um, get away from your, your, your nagging shrew of life, you know? All right, Sid, um, Sid, you know, and from Sid. the vacuuming and the dogs and, and all that, you know, there's just, uh, it, it's, it's wonderful, really. The opportunities are just nearly endless. Sid, this might be a, a kind of personal question, but I am going to ask it. I do feel like I have to. You said you got uh, your situation here. You're ahead of the curve, as you were saying. You're, you, so you didn't get fired or furloughed because of corona. Why did you get let go? Oh, no, I, I, I forgot I was. It's more of a lot. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I, um, Is there a show? I'm sorry. Could I, get, could I get that back? I'm sorry. Could you run that by me again? I'm, I, I'm, I'm checking some, some, uh, some emails right now. Sid, those are very loud emails. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. What is yeah, that? What is that? Is that a uh, movie? Um, yeah, no, it's a well, sort of. Um, you know, um... Hold on, I'm sorry. Let me let me uh let me let me step 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 away for for a second. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. What was the question again? Why were you let go if not Corona? Oh, sorry. Hold on. I pressed the wrong button on my computer. Um, these are really important work emails. I just um, it's sorry. Uh, well, I wasn't let go. It's a lateral move, you know. Um, it's it's more so. They and I came to an agreement that. 
I was wasting my skills. I was wasting my interpersonal skills a little bit. They were a little intimidated by me. And so I think coronavirus was just a wonderful, um, excuse me, corona was a wonderful opportunity for me to, to make that, that, that move over to, to, to self-employment, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so you were, um, you were, you were, agreement. you were not let go. You were, you were, you were, uh, too good for the job. Is that kind of what you're saying here? And, and they decided no. that. No? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, you know, not even the big brains necessary to, uh, you know, um, this is really, you know, it's really a badge of honor. Sid, what are, Sid, 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 what are you doing? What is that noise? Well, you have to tell well, me what this uh, noise is. Tell me. Now. What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, baby, what are you doing in there? What that's, are you doing? That's you, Sid, you're, it's, it's coming from... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, she doesn't work from home, so she just she's not. You gotta get some doors, understand. Sid. Sid, if you're gonna work from she, home, you need doors. Am I? Come on. Come on. Seriously. I, well, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that the door removing the doors was an issue of. Um, you remove the doors. Self yeah. Well, I, I, I. Sometimes you need to. Uh, it's a cost to do a business. At the end of the day, you know, when you're self-employed, sometimes you have to refinance your house. And sometimes the doors, you have to get rid of them and sell them, you know, get some more money in so that you can have a little bit of liquid assets, you know, going forward. I see. I see. Okay. So you, you, you <laughs> pawned off your doors. So you can get a I, um, I, 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 uh, it was a temporary loan in terms of, uh, of, uh, doors were exchanged for money alone. And then, uh, and then uh, I did not pay the loan back. So the doors are gone. But, um, Honestly, it's kind of a rough, a rough term for it. You know what I mean? You're okay. Well, I, I didn't mean it in a rough way. Sid, uh, it's been great talking to you, but I honestly can barely understand what you're saying because there's so much chaos in your house right now. I think I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut this off. No, no, I, you know, I have a few more uh, points I just wanted to make real quick, if that's okay. You know, just with regards to, um, um, you know, the. Uh, there's so much more to get into, you know. Um, I, 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 Sid, Sid, there's something happening. There's, I'm going through a tunnel. Ah, uh, of course I can't go through a tunnel because I am stationary. But I had, you understand, I had to stop the call. I had to stop the call because Sid, though he is an expert. couldn't understand what he was saying i mean holy hell he's a busy guy he's clearly very busy he was working on a lot of things in there and no doors no doors it's avant-garde if you ask me all right we're supposed to be going into another break here but i want to do this segment this second segment oh god damn it we're so fucking behind God damn it. I'm going to do this segment real quick. Okay. We've got this still going. This this test is floating in here. This is a test. This is urine. This is my urine. This is a ketone strip. In there. We're going to be testing to see if I have corona with a ketone strip. It's, it's abstract, but it's going to work. you got to think outside the box when it comes to corona. But we have a second. We have a backup test. All right, and that's the Corona questionnaire. Now, I could not find a, an actual Corona questionnaire, so I, did, I found the next best thing, which is gay test for teen boys. All right, let's go through this real quick. We're gonna take this together. Are you a teen boy who's looking around at other boys, comparing yourself and thinking you might not be straight? That's totally okay, because there is no right or wrong when it comes to who you are sexually and in many other things I just want to say real quick there is some right or wrong sexually when it comes to that like rape child rape that would be considered wrong sexually anyway this test won't be 100 percent accurate for every boy but it will give you a basis to start thinking about what your sexuality truly is all right great i'm game and by the way, this is going to tell us if we have Krona. 
Scenario 1. A. You're at school. The bell has rung for the last lesson. On the way, there's a cute boy walking next to you. He turns around and he says he thinks you're cute. How do you reply? I don't say anything because I'm not sure what I think of him. I'm not sure if he's hot or not, I guess. I think you're cute too. Or I ignore him and walk off. My answer would probably just be to say thank you in a very straight way, but I'll just do this for now. Scenario 1B. The boy then invites you to his house to play on the Xbox. How do you reply to that? I tell him definitely and hope he's gay. Fingers crossed. Okay, sure. Reluctant. I tell him no in the most polite way I can think of at the time. I guess, I guess, I guess this. I don't want to just play Xbox with a guy because he called me cute. That, that, I would, I think I would be gay if I wanted to do that. Scenario 1C. While you're playing on the Xbox, okay, so I don't have no choice in this. He's, he's, he's come over. We're playing Xbox. While you're playing on the Xbox, the boy falls asleep on your lap. Which do you do? Wake him up, go to bed and have sex with him. Okay, let him stay that way. He looks so cute. Then maybe kiss him. (laughs) Wake him up, then go home. Okay, there's... For a straight person, of course, this would never happen. (laughs) This would never occur. There's never a situation where straight men are hanging out and one of the men just happens to fall asleep on your lap. That does not occur. So this is a flawed question. (laughs) I guess wake him up, then go home. (laughs) Scenario 1D. The boy then wakes and apologizes, and you decide it's time to go to bed. There is only one bed, I guess. What do you do? Sleep next to him, go top to tail, sleep on the floor slash go home. I would, I don't know why these are the same answer, because they're quite different. I would go home. If this man was uh, trying to sleep on my lap a lot. Scenario 1E, wherever you choose to sleep, even if it was your home, you wake up when the boy starts hugging you. Oh no, he's followed me to my home. He then asks if you will have sex with him, and he tells you he's willing to be top or bottom. Oh, okay, what do you do? Choose bottom, it's the best. Say no and leave. Be top, it's the man's role. I guess say no and leave. I think it'd be more like I would say something like, why Why are you here? Why did you follow me? Why are you hugging me? I'm asleep in my own bed. What is going on? I knew I shouldn't have played Xbox with you. Scenario 1F, the boy then asks if you'll be his boyfriend. What do you say? No way, I'm not gay. Yes, definitely. Yes, but only if he keeps it a secret for now. All right. Scenario 2A, While you're at a swimming pool, there's a boy just getting out. You give him a hand up, hand up, not not what I was thinking, and he thanks you. You stare into each other's eyes, and he tells you he thinks you're cute. How do you reply? Get lost, weirdo. Thanks, I guess. You're cute, too. Uh, I'll probably say thanks. I wouldn't put the I guess. I would just, I would say a very curt. Thank you. To 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 imply that I'm not interested because uh, as we've seen from this test, these people, these these gay boys, will apparently follow you home. Scenario two B: the same boy then follows you into the shower. Oh no! And as you pull down your swim trunks to take a shower, he does the same. All right, well that's that's I guess that's normal. You then realize he's in the same cubicle as you and that he's naked. What do you do? Leave the building immediately. Have a shower with him and keep looking at him naked and have sex with him. Suck him off. Okay. No, no. I guess I guess leave the building immediately. That's the only not gay answer here and it's it's a bit much. Scenario 2C, just before you leave the shower, he kisses you on the lips. You get out and he gives you his number. And he says to call you if you ever want to have sex with him again. Would you take him up on this offer? Ah, maybe if I'm bored. 
Scenario 3A, you are at home and some new people have moved into the house next door. You look out the window and see a boy around your age getting into a little pool. <laughs> he's wearing tight speedos, and as he's walking, you can see his butt move. Where are you looking? At him. He's good looking. At his butt. Obviously. I want it. Anywhere but at his bits and pieces. This is getting disturbing. I'm looking at a little boy going into a little pool, wearing tight speedos. I don't want to look at him. Scenario 3B, the boy notices you watching him. All right, I was watching him. I can't help myself, goddammit. And he starts twerking and dancing. <laughs> what would you do? Look away? <laughs> Wank over him? Nobody can see. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just stare. Jesus, I guess look away. Scenario 3C. This test is clearly for gay teen boys. It's not for teen boys who are perhaps gay. This is clearly for extremely gay teen boys. Scenario 3C. The boy then invites you to his house. He get, you get into his pool with him. Danger zone. After a few minutes, he kisses you on the cheek unexpectedly. What do you do? Get up and leave. Blush hard and wait for another kiss as I get a semi-boner. Kiss him back very sexually. Honestly, I've never been in this situation. I've never been fooling around in the pool with a boy and having him kiss me on the cheek unexpectedly. I don't think I would get up and leave. I think I would probably be like, Hey, I didn't... Don't kiss me, please. But that's not an option, so. Question four. You are walking to town. As you go around the corner, you see two boys kissing. On the other side of the street, you see two girls kissing. They all invite you to join them. Who do you go with? Why not both? The two boys. Me and two girls is a dream. I don't. I don't. I d if there are just people making out in the street and they in invite me over, I don't. I don't go over. That is not the that is not that is not my crowd. But I'll just say this. All right, the results. For 85% you are so what sexuality are you? You're straight. Hell yeah. Meaning you are only attracted to the opposite gender. Oh shit. It's fine if this is what you like. It's still the easiest way to be because most everyone expects it. Although this is starting to change as more people like you wonder about their sexuality and explore all the possible options before settling on heterosexuality. Um, okay, so uh, I'm at a loss. I mean, I guess this means that I, I don't have Krona because I didn't want to kiss everybody and I didn't want to wank over boys in little pools. So I think that that lowers my uh, my risk. Of getting Krona. It seems like if I answered this in the most gay way possible, I would have a much higher chance of getting Krona. Because all the gay answers were like, kiss and fuck every boy that is around. Anyway. Holy shit, it's 837. You know what that means? I think I've got an idea. Shit. Ah! Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Oh. There it is. Oh. Cole B. Cole B, not Colby.
coal because you put the zip code like I said, you're going to get the holographic sticker. See, you did your address properly, too. Good job. Okay. You did a little out of order, but that's okay. Damn. Stuart, you getting a magnet, baby. Cut that short. Holy god damn it. I can't believe how long this is all gone. This is amazing. Uh, next, we're going to do one more. We're going to do a couple of these audience voicemails again. I like those audience voicemails. What else we got in here? Uh, how about this one? Hey, this is Dr. Foster calling back with your, your test results. I got good news and bad news. Good news is COVID free. Results came back negative. Bad news, tested positive for HIV. I know this can be scary, but you know, if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and call my office. We're gonna hold on to your sample and uh, you know where to reach me. Have a good evening. Okay, I can explain that. That, 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 that was not accurate, first of all. You should know that I don't have health insurance. So I was a little bit spooked six months ago when we did the show. I thought I might have corona because I did the homemade corona test and it seemed like all signs are pointing to yes. So I went to a sort of back alley guy. He was he was he was a bit of an abortionist, really. That was his main trade, was doing those back alley abortions you hear so much about. And he's very skilled with the abortions. He's very he's a skill he's an artist with the coat hanger. But uh, you know, I, I when I got to talk when I talked to him for a bit, I, I I got the feeling he doesn't actually he doesn't know shit about HIV. A, I don't believe a word he says. That's all it comes down to is he's not to be trusted. What else we got here? <coughs> uh, sorry, my name is uh, Ricky Todd. I'm an <coughs> I'm an active member of the anti-mask movement here in the U.S. of A. With the uh, number of mask users growing exponentially, I'd like to ask, what can I do to protect myself and my rights from this mask pandemic? I mean, I can't even leave my home without being swarmed. Every business I enter urges me to wear a mask or get thrown out. It's insanity, so I ask you, what can I do? That's a tough question, man. It is insanity. What can you do? Like I said, I have I've yet to figure out the secret code for uh, forcing people to serve you. It's a problem with all these uh, this damn service economy. Is uh, I at the end of the like you can't make it happen. Maybe you could. Maybe you just need a gun. Hmm. Something to think about. A gun. If you had a gun, 
it really changes things. You really, you, you kind of shift the, right now the power is all in the institutions. And they have infinite power to say, hey, you got to do whatever the hell we desire. Or that's, you can't come in here unless you do, you follow our rules. But if you have a gun, uh, the, all bets are off. You know, you make your own rules with a gun. So I guess that would be my advice. Buy a gun, find a gun if you can't buy one, steal a gun, carry it around. I also say don't don't get a holster, just hold it, hold it in your hand, and then uh, then people will will listen. They'll 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 understand that that you mean business. All right, we're gonna go into another audience phone in section i'm turning off do not disturb mode right now uh oh god you may call in we can chat about corona or whatever okay call from toast to accept, press 1. Hello, Toast. Hey, what's going on, Dad? You just call me Dad? Yeah, I called you Dad, man. What's up? Mom told me lots of stories about you. Um, I, 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 I don't think I'm your... First off, I don't think I'm your dad. Just right off the you, rip, I don't think you don't, I'm your dad. You don't think that you're my dad. What makes you say that? Come on. Well, you sound about my age, or maybe that's wrong. That's false. How old are you? I I I think I am ten. That's beyond the point. We're here okay. to talk about Rona. All right. Well, if you're ten, then then it's feasible at least. All right. So, what? Who's your mom? <laughs> what, what did she say about me? Oh, uh, she was just some whore down in L.A. Uh, she was on a street corner near the fucking Lux. I don't know if you remember. Uh, she told me you were having a bender, and things just kind of went sideways in the hotel room, and you guys had to go your separate ways. Uh, yes. There was, a, there was an issue, I remember, with the uh, protection with your mom. There was an issue with it. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what uh, I mean? Well, she, you're she only 10. You probably don't She's know. She's kind of evil. Uh, you're only 10. You might not actually know what the hell I'm talking about when I talk about protection. But uh, just know that your mommy, yeah, like you said, she's a little bit evil. She's a little bit evil. She is a little bit evil. But hey, hey, I heard you tested free for the Rona. I'm sure that makes you upset. Upset that I don't have Rona? Yeah, of course. I mean, come on. Think about it, man. You're like a young guy. You know, you're, you look fit. You look like you're in great shape. Like, this COVID thing wouldn't affect you all that much. You might have a cough, but you could, like, run into the nearest retirement home. Man. Dude, you're right. Oh, I could, what I that could... would do. Oh, what that would do for Social Security, man. You'd be a fucking legend. Now, now that's, this is kind of a, that's an interesting idea. I think you're, you're kind of right. Like, I could be a I Corona mean, Trojan horse. Yeah, my, I am my mother's son. <laughs> 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 you rem- yeah yeah you remind me of her this is this is actually this is bringing me back down to to la i'm going down memory lane right now i'm sure all the elvis impersonators who are half drunk half stoned off oh, man i'm okay, sure well so i did i didn't have corona last time but we're doing a new test this time to find out if i do have corona i took the gay questionnaire to sort of that's just that's just an indicator I saw, but it's not i saw it, man that seemed really one-sided and against you i i, I think I someone was orchestrating that test i don't i don't fully agree with the, the the results, number one, I don't think you're an eighty five percent kind of guy. I think you're leaning more ninety. You know, you're Thank maybe ten percent gay. I don't know standard. what questions I answered that gave me the fifteen percent gay, but uh, you know, I I guess it might have it might have been timed, and it might have been your hesitation on giving him a uh, wink. That, that might have be been very it. Very smart. That'd be a very clever way of doing the test. Timed responses. If you have to stutter on saying no, you're fucking gay. Okay, but that, they didn't take into account that I was reading all the questions out loud for everybody and stuff. Like, if I was doing that by myself, I would I would have done that test in two minutes flat. Two minutes. Hell, maybe a minute thirty. Throw some broken glass in there. I don't even need to read the answers. I just need I just need to control F. No enter. I just go. need someone to tell me which answer is not gay, and I'm just going to put that answer in. Whenever they tell me is not the gay one, 
that's what I'm going to do. That's the word. That's how I live life, man, every day. I ask myself, like, this, this is change. Should I give this? I'm buying a soda. She tells me it's $1.46. If I give her exact change, would that be gay, or should I just be a man and give her $2 because that's not worth my time? You know? Dude. There are little tests every day that life likes to give you. I, I absolutely agree. Exact change is some of the most homosexual shit on the planet. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's why you only oh, see man. old people doing it. Only see old people doing it. Yeah, man, how do you feel about these people? I used to work at a, a gas station, right? And it's a people farm. I see people go in and out every day. And there are these people, man, that will come in like wearing a mask, but they don't want to say anything as if like speaking will spread this virus faster. How do you feel about that? With like these people that try to learn sign language, they can tell you (laughs) what they want off a menu using their fucking hands. Like, (laughs) well, well, for one, that sounds very stupid, but I have to say, what the hell? But me, what is this? But hold on me in this, in this, where I've got to go out and dead. Stop this. It hurts. (laughs) <laughs> Wait, well, hold on. <laughs> when I gotta go out with the mask, okay, on, okay. I can barely hear you. Have fun. I'm sorry, Dad. Who's your dad? What, what, what the hell are you talking about? I thought I was your dad. I don't know what's happening. All I hear is a high pitched whine. I gotta go. My ears are bleeding. Love you, Dad. Great dad. About, what happened? I was ready to get all into it. I thought we were talking, son. Is this what it's like? To be a father, they just, they call you up one second and then they don't want to talk to you at all. Ungrateful pieces of... Call from... Jerry. To accept, press 1. To send a voicemail. Jerry. Hey, I just wanted to call in and just, uh, you know, tell you that I love the show and I love everything that you do and I think you're very uh, handsome and very intelligence and I, I just really love all your content man thank you thank you jerry uh how did uh, oh this is this is actually kind of awkward i was i was talking to rob not when what just just now i this i'm i'm ta- i mean rob i like I was oh about Rob's content. you were directing your comments just now to rob yeah yeah that you don't think I am hilarious and attractive. You think Rob is. Well, I mean, well, he is like the brains behind this whole operation, right? Do you honestly believe that? Can you honestly look at this dude behind me and think that he has anything, anything remarkable to say? You don't think that I put all of the words into his mouth, this Rob character? No, yeah, he looks like a totally fit. He looks incredibly intelligent. He's educated, you know. Why wouldn't I believe that? Were you watching while we were doing the gay teen quiz just a moment ago? Uh, no, why do you ask? Okay, well, I was just wondering what, what your thoughts were on the gay teen quiz, whether you, you, whether you might have answered differently than I on the questions. Well, you know... I probably just would have picked the answers that uh, that made me feel the best, you know, in the moment. It's something you can't really judge until you're there face to face with. Well, I gotta tell you, Rob, little boy, Rob is Rob is entirely asexual, and he doesn't admit it. He's in denial about it. I don't believe that. He I is. He is. He talks all. a big game, but Rob does not do anything. He does. He's. He's never. He's not. He, I live with Rob, all right? He's never brought anybody home. A man, woman, mannequin, nothing. He, he, he doesn't get out. So Rob may have this, you may think he has this allure and this sort of playboy persona, but in fact, he, he's, he's, like a, he's like a celibate eunuch. No, I think I think you're just jealous, honestly. I think no. you're just jealous that everyone is watching this just because of Rob. That's not and true. And we all just want to fuck Rob, and we all That's think that not he's true. a hardless show. And uh, honestly, I, I'm not even gonna humor you. I'm not even gonna talk to you anymore. <laughs> just let me. Just let. Just let Rob know that I said hi. And uh, yeah, just have. Just let him know I said hi. Okay, bye. <laughs> what the fuck? 
What the fuck? Was that funny to you, Rob? You feel good about yourself now? Fucking asshole. Rob, I mean, not the guy who called. Call from... David. David, hello. We have to make this very, very quick. Oh, hey. How's it going? You doing good? I'm doing great. I'm doing so great. Why did you call today, David? Oh, you know, called today because, you know, love this show. Love, um, love everything <laughs> you're doing. What is what is going on in your life right now? I'm sorry I started by saying <laughs> I'm about to cut you off. What is, what is going on in your life with Corona? Uh, right now, I'm... I'm at work. I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to be watching all this oh, on shit. the job, but I couldn't miss it. Nice, dude. What's your job? Ah, uh, you know I'm. You don't have to say it specifically. Look at it, I drive a. Uh, drive all that big machinery and stuff. You you drive machinery. Good, good. You're doing that right now. No, not right now. Uh, thank God. If I wasn't, wouldn't be able to call. Well, I would think that you wouldn't be able to call while you're working regardless, but here you are. I mean, hey, you know, it's it's like 10 o'clock at night. Everything's calming down, you know. I figured I'd give Colin in a shot. Nice, nice. <laughs> so it's 10 o'clock where you are? Where Are you in the, like, the Atlantic Ocean? I mean, dude, I wish. Have you seen the fish there, man? They're like wet and stuff. No, no, I can't. I can't say I've I've seen the fish of the Atlantic. I've 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 been in the Atlantic, but just in the very very first part of it, the first ten or twenty feet or so. I never went further than that. Really? I mean, like I'm pretty sure that's like the deepest anyone's ever gone. You you can't go much further than that, can you? There's like I didn't feel like I could. Yeah, exactly. It was it was becoming overwhelming. I got to twenty feet out, and I was like, "What the hell is going on out here? It just never ends." Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's, it's definitely a rugged part of town, you know. <laughs> good, good. It's rugged. Are you rugged? Are you a rugged individual? I'm a I'm a pretty I'm a pretty rugged individual. I mean, I weigh like a hundred. 15 pounds that makes me pretty pretty rugged okay? 115 pounds yeah wow dude are you how tall are you you sound uh slight slight i'm a. I, I, I don't know i don't know <laughs> Did you call in for any particular reason you just like you're watching the show you're like hey this seems fun i'll just call in yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I honestly didn't expect to get in, man. But, you know, I love your stuff, dude. I love the impressions. My, all my friends, they love your stuff. They love the impressions. I do some impressions. They love my impressions. I would love to hear your impressions. God, oh, jeez. Uh, where, what's, where do you start? What's, the, what's, your, what's, what's your top impression? Ah, uh, dude. Dude, you brought it up. Rugged. You brought it up. So don't act like I'm putting you on the spot. Oh. You brought up your impressions. All right, all right, all right. All right, I can do, I can do something rugged. You brought up rugged. Okay. Are you ready to head into mass muscle mesa where we build the games, the games that get the trains, that get your brains filled with protein? I think that was very good. That was very good. Yeah. You know, we get the protein for your brains. We get the protein from the books. We take the books. We roll them up. We shove them up your ass. That's how you get protein in your brain and the muscle for the day. All right, well, dude. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. That was it. That's all I had, man. That's all I had, <laughs> dude. <laughs> thank you for calling. I have to, I have to keep this going because I'm, I'm way yeah, behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, but yeah, thank you for your call. Uh, yeah, love your stuff, man. Thank you, you man. You have I a good one. It. You too.
Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. No more calls right now. Because we are behind again. As soon as I get back on track, I get us behind again. That's the old TMH special. But, uh, okay, cool. We're going into another break now. Stay tuned.
I mean, it's just the flu. As we adjust to the smooth world, they will have glasses on. Wash your hands to flatten the curve. We need to send our kids back to school. The lot that kills it. This is God's punishment upon the world. Is dancing. <laughs> Actually, this changes our service transmission requirement. Why can't tell me not to go to church? Sporting events are back on. Stay at home for God's sake. I'm wearing this mask for only order to go. Can't believe they've opened up the inside. Oh, no mask, no service. <laughs> <laughs> actually do a lot of in all other countries. Do you actually know anyone who's <laughs> <laughs> Sure, that was a war said it was made of. This kind of stuff only happens once every four years. <laughs> Think about, about the economy. <laughs> Small business owners. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm gonna go out and party. I mean, it's just a little cold. As we adjust to the swing, we're moving on. Wash your hands to flatten the curve. We need to send our kids back to school. We drink a lot that kills it. Science experience. Do you actually know anyone who's in it? I mean, it's just a little cold. As we adjust to the swing, we're moving on. Hey, oh! That's why you need a gun, baby. Just in case. Just in case you get a bright idea. How you gonna execute it? There's only one way. All right. Chronocast. Holy hell, we're in the final hour. This has been madness. I felt like the last Chronocast was really... Okay, hold on. <laughs> Hello? Hey, hey, this is Fillmore Graves. Do you remember me? <laughs> Oh yeah, Fillmore Graves. You were on the last Chronocast. You you wanted to you wanted to get the virus, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, let me tell you what. Yeah. So for 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 anyone who didn't know, or who didn't watch the last one, I was uh, I was trying to get the virus and uh, was doing everything I could and I couldn't get it. So I then I resorted I resorted to some virus. I shouldn't. Have. Um. Sorry, I'm running. Fillmore, Fillmore, slow down, slow down. What? Tell it. Hold on. Slow down. No, no, no. Slow down. No, slow okay, down. Okay. We, we can't okay, understand I'll, I'll, you. All right. I'll try to I'll try to walk. I try to talk slower and and run faster. Okay. So here's the deal. Here's yeah. the deal. So I broke into the CDC. All right. And I thought it was really easy. You would be amazed at where you can get with just a clipboard. And a reflective vest. But anyway, I went and I found the corona blood. Okay, so I found the corona blood. And I was like, all right, I did this check. Finally, I'm going to be able to get coronavirus. And that injected into me. And, and the next thing I know, I wake up and it's been months. There, there was people around me and they, they, was, they were speaking Chinese. They're speaking Russian. Oh, God. They're speaking American. Oh no! Look, they're, man, they're all in on it, man. It's just a big lie. Look, they they was trying to get something out of me, and I think they did. Look, what? How did I how did you escape? Defined. How did you Look, escape, Fillmore? I think they sent me free. It was too easy. Look, I just got back to my house. They're after me, but they're on foot. They're on foot. Look. Okay, Fillmore. My Fillmore. car's still here. Yeah. So you broke into the CDC. You injected yourself with the coronavirus. You you passed out. You you came to and you were surrounded by ethnic scientists, foreign scientists. No, not just foreign. They were domestic too. Everyone's in on it, man. Oh, it's a big lie. Oh. All the global global superpowers. They're all pointing fingers at each other, blaming each other. <laughs> well, have you? Uh, what's going on? on? What what has happened since then? You're you're on the run. You're trying to get away from from who, the yeah. government. I'm still bleeding, man. I still got me cut open. I'm trying to keep pressure on. Oh, dude. I don't feel so good. I'm coughing, man. I got low energy. Dude, you're bleeding. You're that's not good, dude. You gotta you gotta suture that or something. Put pressure on. Put pressure on the wound. Put pressure on the wound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm. Uh, look, I tell you what. Right now, I got one hand on my phone and one hand on the wheel and no hands on the wound so i'm gonna t tell you what i'm gonna put you on the ox cord all right just give me one second so you're gonna put a hand on the wound i think that's smart i think that's a yeah, good yeah, decision yeah, yeah. yeah but right now they my car was still here i left it all right you're on the ox now can you hear me yeah yeah yeah. so you're driving you're you're speeding away from from followers yeah 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 oh god all right, there's blue lights behind me now, man. I'm heading out I-75. 
This Dude. is still more graves, and and I'm not gonna kill myself in prison. All right. Dude. All right. Uh, we yes. Is this your last will and testament? Where who do you leave your money to? Tell us. <laughs> I don't know if they're still alive, man. When I left my whole family, they all had coronavirus. I don't know if they made it. But, you can leave, but, but you can leave it to anybody. This is the last will and testament. Who do you want to pick? What, pick anybody. Yeah. All right. Well, I pick. Ah, shit. I thought I was going to get it. I thought I was going to get the money. Damn it. I guess they got him. Son of a bitch. I was this close. I was this close. You heard it. I was. Ah. Damn it. <sighs> that really pisses me off because I was this close. I really could have gotten that money. Ah, oh, what a pain in the ass. All right. Anyway, I guess that was Fillmore Graves. He called in last time. He's on the run. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know this guy. I don't know who the hell he is. Jesus. Could be anybody. We've got more people who are going to be calling in. I've got someone who's going to be calling in momentarily who has uh, been affected by this virus. They, they're a victim of the, the unemployment-induced insanity that has occurred in the past six months. And this, I believe, is that. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello, who is this? This is Delta. Delta, it's great to talk to you. I was just introducing you, saying that you're sort of a victim of the unemployment-induced insanity that coronavirus has ushered in. Uh, what, do you, what do you want to tell us today? One second, one second. The guy double feet. Um, so mostly... I, during this pandemic, I've been employed. I used to work two jobs, mm -hmm. you know, I'm never in the house. And now I'm stuck in the house all day and just my brain runs wild. Mm -hmm. So lately, I've been trying not to dream during the pandemic. Do you know what I mean? You're trying not to dream? Yes. Why is that? I've been having weird... Death dreams? Ah. Hmm. Corona related death hit? dreams? No, just just weird like well, true us. crime dreams. Oh yeah? What how did you die yeah. most recently in a dream? No, it's it's the other way around. Oh which you're, is in, what's you're been bothering Yes, it's the other way around. You're what's, investigating what's been bothering me. You're you're the investigator of a murder in your dreams. More or like you've been murderer. killing. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, I and see. And it's, it's a really weird, like, phenomenon. I'm like, every morning, like, some Is mornings I'll wake up, I'm like, no, I didn't do that, right? <laughs> this has been consistent? Consistent dreams of murder? Like, over the, over, like, the past few months, I'm stuck inside, yeah. And I'm like, but I don't leave the house. Who have you been murdering in your dreams? Mm. I can't. There's always like scenes and feelings that are, are the same. Like, you know, like one weekend I escape. I go to a town, town up north, and it's middle of the night, nothing's open. But a spa. Hmm. Have you been to a 24 hour spa? No, no. No, it's, it's a weird thing. I think the Koreans run them. A 24-hour spa? I, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, like they have salt rooms and stuff like that. And then I don't people remember the name. Around? Are, there, are there not no. guards? But no. no, there's like no names, no feelings, no faces. Hmm. Okay, so you've gone to one, you're going to one of these 24-hour spas in your dream up north, you were saying? Yes. 
And uh, the next thing I remember is being in a parking lot. Like, you know, a dilapidated parking lot, a place that was being built but never finished building. Sure. The dust lot still there. Mm -hmm. And just sealing it back up. I remember the feeling, the stinging on my palms, the heat. Uh, what, 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 what was occurring? The heat. And then, then as the sweat became clammy. And then I just drove away. And then hour, after hours of driving through the night, I could see the sun crossing the horizon over my polluted city. And I felt as if I, too, were exiting the haze. And I woke up. It sounds, it sounds spiritual. It sounds like a journey. It's, I mean, it sounds nice. How did you I feel about it? What, what, what were you feeling when you woke up? Confused, mostly confused. Did you understand? Did you did you say who you murdered? I I, I, no. I was hearing a lot about your palms, but I didn't hear about what actually occurred with the m murder. You were just murdering Strangely. some somebody in the parking lot. Nobody you knew. It's not. It wasn't a personal no. vendetta. Just. I only ask because like when, when I murder people in my dreams, it's always people I know. It's people I hate, and I murder them viciously, and I wake up feeling. Uh, no, usually it's, it's it's usually strangulation, but yeah. like I one of the first times, I think blonde-haired kid. I don't know, not a kid, but you know, like skinny right. twenty twenty-two year old. Right, not a child. No, not a child. That's a whole different kind of dream. Yeah. And the, the Korean falling was weird. I was just, I, the whole time I was just thinking like, did I do this? I was like, no, I didn't do this, right? Ah, uh, no. so it was like one of those dreams, I, I, it was like one of those dreams where you like, you had a dream that you had homework due the next day and it's confusing. Yeah, I'm like, no, I didn't, this, this is not real. And I kept fighting it and fighting it, but in the back of my mind, in the pit of my heart, I knew I did it. And how did that make you feel? Eh? It's, it's, it's numb. Numb. Hmm. That's it. So you yeah, I mean, you feel you so, felt yeah. numb, and and then did that? Uh, what did that lead to? Did did you think maybe maybe that's something you might be? Uh, you know, it's like if I did it in my dream and it's no big deal. What's the difference between reality and dreams? No, I just switched my like Stevie medication out for uh, weed. Ah, and I just kind of fixed the problem. <laughs> that's smart. That's a smart yeah. pivot you made right there. Because honestly, yeah. it sounds like you were heading down a bad path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now I don't dream anymore. I Dude, just ate, <laughs> problem ate, solved. Ate, like slightly shitty sleep hours. <laughs> Well, I think you made the right decision. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you, dreams are an interesting thing, but you know, if you're dreaming about uh, committing murder regularly, maybe dreams aren't the answer for you. Right? Yeah. You know, I got more important things to do. I really got to go, like, clean the dust off the car. Right now? Nah, it's been dusty for a while. You know, okay, back tires. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you aren't driving around really. That's that's why it's so dusty, right? You're not going to work. Yeah. Man, so what's your what's your plan uh, for the future? Just smoke weed until another job rolls around? Oh no, I got I got my callback date. We're gonna go back by the fifteenth January. I won't have my my other job anymore. You're but down to one down okay. to one job? Just down to one, yeah. Could be worse. Could be worse. You could be a right. psychotic person who wants to murder people. But you've avoided that pretty successfully, it seems like. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. How have I mean, you been, by the way? Say what? How have you been, by the way? I've been okay. You know, I haven't dreamed in years. I haven't dreamed. I'm a wait. I'm a regular uh, weed <laughs> smoker, so I don't even. I don't even remember what dreams are like. 
It's a great thing about that drug. No more worrying about dreams. I used to have crazy dreams and wake up and be like, what the, what the hell did that mean? Does that mean I'm, you know, all kinds of things. I could imagine any kind of thing because I have crazy dreams. You have no control over it, but it makes you feel like you're crazy when you wake up from just right. a wacky dream. <laughs> I keep having dreams. All right, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, are we keeping you behind? We we can move on. Delta, it was great talking to you. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, man. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man. I appreciate you calling. Bye. Dreams. Dream on. Dream on. Um, we are a little bit behind. We're gonna be moving right along. This is this is this is another recording we have. This is this is. From uh, Amazon HQ, actually, and uh, this is this is a recording we've acquired from the one of the training programs at Amazon HQ. Take a listen to this; you're gonna find it very interesting. Exercise at least 30 minutes a day. 
Attention, your break period ends in 10 seconds. Exercise such as running or cycling and strength training, such as weightlifting or bodyweight exercises. Attention, your break period ends in 5 seconds. Exercise has been shown to keep your energy high and your immune system strong. It will also improve your sleep. Attention, your, your break period is over. Run piggy, run. Yo, I forgot to do a zine giveaway last hour. So you know what that means, don't you? Now we're doing two! All four of these zines must go! S, you dumbass. You sent me a blank email. Boom! Levi F, you get busy. totally dox you Levi F but you live in a place you live in a town called man's asses did you under, did you realize that man's asses it's time to move bro Hey, and because you live in man's asses, I'm going to give you one of these holographic things. Good job, dude. You're going to get this. This is a zine. Next. We're doing four of these right now. <coughs> Send in your emails, bro. Send them in. I'm, I'm scrolling down. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Boom. Nick. C. Well, C. C is a common last name. Man's asses. Nicholas C, baby, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get this, Mac. John W. John W. It looks like I'm giving away only holographic stickers. Lucky you, Don John W. Alright, last one. Last one of the night. I'm 
and guess what? I never said this at the front, but this person who I've just selected but I have not seen, they are going to win a lifetime subscription to the Mighty Lighthouse. Non-cancelable, non-transferable. You will be getting the zine for the rest of your life. Now that's a deal. Patrick C! It's another C! Patrick C! Patrick C! I don't want to give it to you, Patrick. First, My first thought, you spell Patrick without a K at the end. I don't like that. But I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you, Patrick. Because that's the rules, baby. And I, I made the rules, so I have to abide by them. You get this, Patrick Z. The Z for life. Alright, Patrick C, you get the holographic sticker, you get the zine, and guess what? You get the zine for life. Because you did it. Because you formatted your address properly. Because you're the last person to get the zine. And because, even though I don't like the way you spell your name, that wasn't part of the rules. Congratulations. Alright. Four zines, out. And for Patrick, zines for the rest of his life. Think about the value of that. The zine is eternal. It's never going to stop. It's never going to stop going out. By the way, the zine, the zine, they're all gone now, damn it. Shit, wait. I got one left. The zine. Son of a bitch. You can buy the zine. You may buy the zine. You may go. There's a link in the description of the video. You can go to the minutehour.com and purchase the zine. If you if you want it mailed to you, if you want this printed type zine mailed to you. If you don't want that, or if you don't have the three or so dollars to spend on it, all of the zines are available for free. The minutehour.com slash zines. That link is also in the description of this video. You can read all of the past zines. This is volume three, issue five. That means that there's a lot of issues preceding this, and you can read absolutely every single one of them at the minutehour.com slash zines. And you can download the PDFs and you can print them out yourself if you want. So you don't have to. This is there's no there's no barrier for entry here. You can purchase this if you would like, this beautiful zine, which has been printed and trimmed and stapled and folded. If you would like this sort of thing mailed to you, you can purchase it. If you just want to read the zines, just go where I just said, theminutehour.com slash zines. Read them. PDFs. Print them out yourself. Easy. Okay, that's enough. That's all the zine giveaways, though. That's all we're giving away. Where are we at? Good, good, okay, good, good. Let's do a couple more audience voicemails here. Uh, we've got a few more in here. What's, what's this one? Hey, this is Dr. Foster calling again. So we held on to your samples. It's, it's been about a week. And HIV is showing some sort of abnormalities. It's like it's morphing into some sort of super AIDS. I, I don't know. The whole thing is distressing. I've never seen it before. I, I really think you should come back into the office. Um, we can talk about this in person. I uh, hope to see you soon. Again, this man is wrong. You can't. You ca you cannot trust a man. A word this man says. I talked to him at length 
I went to his, uh, if you could call it a facility, it was more like a, a shed. A shed in an, in an alley. And it didn't seem that suspect at the time because I was saying, oh, I don't have health insurance, so who am I to who am I to ask for a nice office? Who am I to ask for a sanitary pad on the bed? You know what that means? The sanitary sheets, the the butcher paper. Didn't have any of anything like that. This man cannot be trusted. He he's he's a doctor, I guess, but I don't I don't believe it. What about this one? Hey, it's your best pal, your favorite pizza maker, Jimmy Stapler Rosie here. And I got a question for all those people out in the streets tonight, raising their signs and protesting outside my shop. Why are you going to scare everybody with your signs? Your signs say these horrible things. They say horrible things on them. They say all cops are bastards. They say all babies are buttholes are ready to be raped. I see these on the signs. It makes me want. It makes me think, has it really come to this? Does Jimmy Staple Rules he got to board up his own shop? I never you. I owned this shop for 40 years. 40 years got it from my pop. We never boarded this shop. I was trying to close up. I was trying to close up the shop last night, and I had a confrontation with a fella, a fella, a fella. one of those. Uh, You've seen one of these types. He looks. He looks like a punk rocker. He told me, "Hey, pops, why are you closing up? We're just getting started." I said, "Son, I closed the shop at 10 p.m. every night for 40 years since I took the shop from my pop." And he closed it for 20 years before that at 10 p.m. Because it's always been the Stapler Rosie pledge to not let our work take over our lives. So when I get home at 10 p.m., I still got an hour left for Mrs. Stapler Rosie before I need some sleep. You understand? So I got to close up right now. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not part of your gang. I'm not part of your... Your, your band, all right? So why don't you just back up? They hit me, see, dude, they hit me right in the head, they hit me. These people are outrageous. They're outrageous. I'm just trying to open my shop and close my shop. It's the only time I got to go outside. And they always, I'm always getting into these confrontations. I don't even start them. I don't start them. I'm not an instigator. I'm not an instigator. These, these people, these people, they antagonize me. They antagonize me. My pops, God rest his soul. God rest his soul. I couldn't have people saying these things about my pops. It's not all right. Okay. All right. That was, that was I guess I was a, a small business owner. This virus, it affects all of us. Sometimes, you know, in different, different, different for everybody. Okay. We're going to take one final break. The show is supposed to go till 10. We're going to go a little bit long, just a little bit long, maybe 15, 15 minutes. We're going to take one final break here. Please stick around for the end of the show. We'll be ending pretty soon here. All right? But uh, for now, just enjoy this break. <laughs>
is an internal message from the CDC meant only to be played at coronavirus treatment units. Well, 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 look who it is, huh? Look what the cat dragged in, huh? If you're hearing this, you caught it. I have a question for you. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Was, was getting the hamburger at the Wendy's worth it? Was going bowling worth it? Was it worth it to go to your shitty church and go sing hot cross buns really poorly? Was that worth it? I don't think it was. But hey, you do you, man. You do you, except now you do the ICU. Ha <laughs> ha, got him. All right? We're here. We're talking about this. And guess what? If you are hearing this, your prospects are not good. They're not. I, I can see it on your face right now. You're some withered old fuck. You, you know, they're about to cut you open, put the, put the ventilator in, and you're thinking to yourself, what, 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 what do I do now? What, what, what am I supposed to do? I'll tell you what you're supposed to do now. You're supposed to die, all right? Die, clear up the bed. We got, we, we got more cases to deal with. But you know what? While you're dying, you can do something useful. There, there is something, something to be gleaned from this, this, this moment of learning, and that is your body. What are you going to do with it? What's your plan with your body, huh? When you're dead and gone, what, what are you thinking? Uh, you could get buried? You're going to have a funeral? Hell no. Hell no. What does uh, avoid crowds mean? Clearly not enough, but maybe now it's finally sunk in. What else are you going to do? You got to get cremated? What? Are you going to be put in an urn? Get put on someone's mantle? So your sniveling grandkids can look at it and be like, well, what happened to Grampy Pepepe? And then, and then your sons will say, well, he was a fucking moron. Huh? Is that what you want? Wait, 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 cryogenic freezing? What? So 200 years, they know what a clown looks like? Be real. Do something useful. But donate your body to science, right? So, so, so we, we, can, we can accomplish something from this, this quote-unquote tragedy that's about to unfold. What, 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 are we gonna, what are you going to do with it? What science can you do with it? What fucking difference does it make? Give me a break. What do you care? Huh? Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll cut you open. We'll try and find a cure for COVID. Maybe we'll strap you to a chair and explode you to see how far your limbs fly. Maybe we'll just cut off your head and play hacky sack with the moron. Who fucking cares? Donate your body to science, all right? Make this whole experience fucking worthwhile. Do something useful for once in your miserable goddamn life.
Are you running out of odd gizmos to do your hickey? Don't you want a hotter showstopper thingamabobber? Dig a gig with a big thingamajig? Well, we might have just the thing to spice your season. Introducing the very first global for public market. We guarantee you won't find anything else like it. One of a kind. Ambiguous. Confusing. Made for nothing, use it for anything. A perfect desk companion. Good for morale. Plug it into your computer. Infinite battery. battery. Cook with it. Try, Try with meatballs. Meatball. Stick your finger in it. Ew. It's... It's kind of warm. Like... Like warm skin. What the hell is this? No one truly knows. Mysterious. Studies show that it's actually living, despite not needing any sustenance. It breathes. Low maintenance. Recent studies have shown that it is important to semi-regularly water the glubal, or it will develop a crusty layer of dry skin that sheds everywhere. Uh-oh. You're throwing a party, but the punch bowl is dry and the toilet roll won't supply. No fear, because the global is a quick and surefire way to please a crowd in a pincher. Caution, the global behaves unpredictably around large groups of people. Now everyone's riding the vibe. For a fairly fair price, the global can be yours. Price for the global will be negotiated on a sale-by-sale -sale basis. Don't wait. Get your paws in your very own global before it's gone. Or before it's taken away from us. The fact that we still have any and all is a market miracle. Must be 18 years or older or younger to order. No questions asked. Product will not be delivered to your home due to safety and discretion issues. It must be picked up in a discreet location by arrangement. Returns are not available for the global. The reselling of this product or advertising of your ownership is strictly prohibited. Returns are not available for the global. Price will be determined with the buyer privately. Payments must be made through an anonymous cryptocurrency exchange. Returns not available for the global. Returns are not available for the global. Corona, Rona, Corona, Rona, Rona, Corona, Rona, Corona, Rona, Rona, Corona, Rona, Corona, Rona, Rona, Corona, Rona. And we are back. This is the last time that we are back. This is the last block of the show here. We're going to go a little bit over 10 o'clock because we've been behind since the beginning. I don't even remember what happened. What did I? What was I talking about at the beginning that was so... That ruined everything. That ruined this whole schedule. Was it just my alcoholism? I was just talking about the Dick Van Dyke on the Dick Cavett show? Did that seriously... Pisses me off. Sure, it's a great anecdote, but I, I ruined the whole show. It's not ruined. Okay, anyway, we're in the last part of the show here. We got a few more calls that are going to be coming in. I'm going to get to this corona test result right here. I'm, I I feel like I'm going to be touching piss no matter what. I can't. It's it's just the, the strip. I don't know if you can see this. It's just floating in there. I was trying to get it to... Also, why is my... Why are there all these bubbles? That's concerning. Okay, here's a call. Hello. Hey. Hello. How, uh, uh, who is this? Oh, uh, this is uh, T. Marty from The Milkman. Oh, The Milkman. You guys had a song on earlier, right? Yeah, yeah. We did the the one with the dancing guy. That was me. And, and the, the gun. It was called... Yeah, the gun. <laughs> yeah. What uh, yeah. what what became of the what became of the gun? What was the uh, aftermath of that video? The epilogue. Um, I don't know. I feel like if I if I tell you, it will kill the magic. You know, it's up for interpretation. All right, that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, how are you doing today? What's what's going on with you? Uh, I mean, yo, know, I mean, okay. So it's pretty. Uh, I'm drunk right now, by the way. Um, Hell yeah, bro! It's been a good evening. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's been a good evening. You know, Chronocast has been a blast, and you know, I'm hanging out with some guy friends, the Multiman band members. I hadn't seen them in like two weeks, but um, yeah, I just wanted to like tell you about how drinking uh, is good for the for it's, it kills the coronavirus. Drinking, 
Alcohol uh-huh. kills the coronavirus. I haven't I haven't yeah. heard this. Is this a theory or is this this is is this I'm the real actually, deal? I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, okay, I'm, I'm calling in like a, as a joke, but I, I mean, obviously, all of this is superstition. My my fucking my dad believes it, but uh, he like he like sent me this Facebook post for like this German scientist or whatever. It was like, hey, drinking kills it, and the stronger the alcohol, the better. So like, if you be well, I mean that that makes. It makes sense on a basic level where, like, alcohol is, like, used as a disinfectant, so the stronger the alcohol, right? Yeah, actually, yeah, you know, he said, like, stronger alcohol, better. And, like, I uh, I don't, I mean, I drink beer, but my favorite is bourbon. And uh, right now I've had a few glasses of Old Forester 100 proof. Oh, my and, God. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've just been drinking, I mean, I drank well over a, quart of beer at this point but it's just beer <laughs> and it's it's coors light even i was drinking okay. P- i was drinking pbr extras last night and <laughs> i was gonna do that for the stream today but they were too heavy that i was getting i got mm-hmm. wasted last night and tonight i can yeah, drink yeah, almost yeah. two quarts of beer and i feel fine yeah i need some light keep going through you but like okay that's the that's the thing with it um so when, when you drink my dad was a bartender, and there was this one guy that always went into the bar, and he would always order, like, the top shelf of the nice liquor. And my dad one day, he asked him, he was like, so why do you always get the nice stuff? And he's like, oh, oh, he was, he was like a high-functioning drunk. And uh, he, got the, he got the nice stuff because it was cleaner, right? So because, like, like, beer, mm. you drink so much for so little alcohol, but you drink the, like, 100-proof stuff, and it's, it's cleaner and doesn't give you a hangover. So, so the deal is... Like that's why that's another benefit of drinking the really strong stuff is because when you drink it, you uh, got a less of a chance of feeling icky afterwards. You know, that's right. There's and, less, uh, less of those fire. impurities. Right, right. And um, actually, that, that reminds me. Um, so, so my family's from Louisville, Kentucky, right? And that's like fucking bourbon capital, right? I've and, been there. Uh, I went to I went to the yeah. Evan Williams uh, distillery. Oh, shit. Yeah, Hell dog, yeah. I, I got a tour. And, and let me just tell you real mm-hmm. quick, at the Evan Williams distillery on the tour, they have a video wall that they play a pre recorded video where someone pretends to be Evan Williams and he's talking wow. to like people in the nineteen hundreds or eighteen hundred, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I got an idea. It's called <laughs> sending bourbon down the river in casks. And everyone's like, You're a fucking imbecile, Evan Williams. And he's like, I don't know, might be an idea. And then of course the, he's liberated. Yeah. He's 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 the hero by the end of the story. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Yeah, no, like, um, literally in Louisville during during the Spanish flu, right? The the employees of uh, like the morgues, they would drink like Kentucky mules to mm-hmm. to keep themselves like not contaminated. It totally worked. And yeah, no, that Evans Williams guy reminded me of something. My my great uncle is the uh, is the guy that posed for the logo of I W Harper, which is another <laughs> bourbon brand. <laughs> Fun, fun thing of trivia right there. He posed. Do you mm-hmm. do you have any? Uh, yeah. Do you have any uh, 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 documentation like of that, or is that like your uncle just saying, "Yeah, I posed. Oh, I'm yeah, the no, guy." No, no, no. I I got a picture of him up on up on uh, the wall wow. of him doing the pose. I got a picture, a photograph of him doing it, and then we got like this special little statue of him. But yeah, yeah. Wait, he's just Pretty doing cool the pose stuff. in it. In a picture, he's doing he's, the he's doing the leaning with the top hat and the cane. Yeah, I mean, I okay, I I, I don't want to sound overly skeptical, but couldn't anybody, after the fact, uh, get in the pose and say, "Look at me, I did the, I, I that's the me, I did the pose." You know, I never thought of that, but. <laughs> You could be right, man. I don't know. Well, we don't. I, 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 hey, I don't know your uncle. I'm sure he's a great guy. I don't want to. No, great uncle. I, I am. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, man. So, so you're, you're, you're feeling okay then? Like you get your drink on, and now you're, uh, you're not as. Are you? Tell me about how you are when you, when you, when you aren't drinking. Is are you a worried man? Are you? What's? Why do you drink? Oh, oh God, that's all. 
That's a loaded question. <laughs> that is a loaded question. Why do you drink, uh, sir? All right. So, so mm, th- this is kind of kind of good timing because, like, literally a few days ago, um, some of my other friends who are in the band were like, "Look, man, you drink too much." Um, I I disagree. Me and my me and my girlfriend, we live together. We we drink like I don't want to say most nights, but all right. So th- there was a there was a period in my life like about half a year ago where I had, I was starting to spiral down the path of like borderline alcoholism, right? Pretty bad stuff. Like I, I could hardly sleep without drinking. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. really getting a word to anyone who's listening out there, if you're, if you're starting to think like, man, I need to drink to sleep. You need to, you need to take a step back. Well, and, uh, I mean, uh, were you, what were you eating? I mean, I, I think I need to drink to eat, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's, that bad i don't know i guess i guess maybe we're in different stages of of this you know probably like it's never been like it's never been an an emotional thing i guess i mean like i i think a lot you know sometimes it it was hard to sleep you know without dulling my mind a little bit but i've gotten past that and everything you know i wake up earlier so i'm more tired at the end of the day and stuff but so yeah. what about what about today? What what about today made you think, uh, hey, I I, I want to get back to it. I want to hit the sauce hard again. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've had like, I uh, in forty minutes. I've had probably four. four oh my last god! Good so purpose. what what was it? What prompted this? You know, you gotta kill the virus. Um, you know, you get it in your mouth. Alcohol kills stuff, and you know, inhale it, and. I don't know all the science and stuff, but it, it, actually, okay. Real quick. So you're um, not an al- you're not an alcoholic. You're you're just engaging in this right now because you want you want to be safe. This is a precautionary alcoholism. Absolutely, absolutely. This is this is necessity, right? So, so actually, I um, a few days, like maybe a week ago, I uh, I'm an otherwise healthy 21 year old, and I felt chest pain. Right, and I like hmm. felt my knee this chest pain right where my heart was, and I was like, "Oh, that's, yeah. that's a good thing." It's I'm concerned. gonna get that checked out. I scheduled a doctor's appointment and everything, but I, I stopped drinking for a few days, and then uh, you know I told my I told my dad about it, and like, hey, maybe it could be coronavirus, and you know what he said? He said, "Pour yourself a glass of bourbon." And I was like, "All right." And that was right after my friends were like, you probably need to stop drinking because, you know, the cycle of drinking and caffeine is probably not good for your heart. But I went ahead and just, uh, yeah. I drank and it felt fine. It felt pretty good. And what was, how did that go? What was, what was the result? Did you feel better? Yeah, I think I had coronavirus. I think I stopped it right in its tracks. I mean, hey, dude, that's, that's uh, you know, that's anecdotal evidence, but I happen to believe in anecdotal evidence. I believe in the, the stories that people tell me and the, the, the things that I see around me. I don't need a statistic to tell me what I already know. I don't need to hear that whatever percentage of all everybody in the United States or the globe. I just need to hear you tell me that you drank bourbon and now you feel better. That's right. That's right. Yeah, don't listen. Don't listen to everyone. It's a big echo chamber of people looking for whatever facts they want to, whatever statistics can be manipulated however they want. You got to do you and whatever works for you. And for whatever works for me is drinking and not being, not being good. All right. Well, with that, T. Marty, let's call it yeah. a close. I think, I think you're doing well. I don't, I don't think you need any help from me. You sound like you got it figured out. Yeah. Just, uh, Everything in moderation, except for when you need it for yeah. coronavirus protection. Except for drinking, yeah, exactly. All right, thank you. Thank you for calling in. Appreciate your call. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nice. Good. Good. Wisdom for the children. Hey, if you've never drank before, if you're, if you're, I forgot to say at the top of this stream, I meant to say this, this stream is for adults only. It's rated A, O, adults only, consenting adults only. I meant to say this at the very top, and it would have been more effective, I think, if I said it at the beginning, but you have to consent 
to be watching this stream and you have to be an adult who's able to consent. So if any, if you hear anything that's questionable, it's not my fault. Like I'm absolved. I'm absolved of all legal liability. You should be an adult watching this. I assume that you can discern things, but if you're a child, if you're a baby, I have nothing to do with it. I don't consent to that. I don't consent to you watching my stream. Get the get out of here. I should have said it at the beginning, but I didn't. But now I'm saying it. Minutes from closing. You shouldn't have watched this stream, you dirty child. What's wrong with you? This is not for you. This is for adults. A. O. A. O. Okay, anyway. I'm going to get to to this test here. I poured myself a celebratory glass of white wine here just in case cuz I feel like this is I don't feel I don't feel burdened with corona at all. I actually feel quite physically free. So, I'll look at this, but I don't think this is going to tell me that I'm positive. Last call. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. And who is this? Um, this is No No. No No? It's good no, to no. hear from you. It's good to hear from you too. I have no idea who I'm calling. This is the minute hour. This is the Corona cast. You're the last call of the night. You're calling uh you, did did you have a did you have a, a reason for calling or you just you dialed random numbers and this is what this is what occurred? Um, you know, I was actually browsing through YouTube and I was just looking for something without an ad. And this popped up and said live and Yeah. That's right. No numbers. No ads here. All the ads you see on the Chronocast are one hundred percent fake. One hundred percent not real ads. So you, you 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 don't get brainwashed at all. Wow, that's really that's that's a relief. You've been watching the that's show then? How how what do you think? Oh my god, it was amazing. Really? It was amazing, yes. Now hold on, I don't want people to think that this is some sort of staged call where I told you to say, Hey, the show is amazing right at the very end to convince people. This isn't that, do right? My, do I need to change my opinion? Do no, I need no, to no, 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 no. That's a good opinion. I just want you to confirm that I didn't tell you to say that. Well, I confirm that the show was indeed amazing. Great. All right, great. <laughs> what else do you have to say for yourself then? I mean, the show was amazing. That's good to hear. But uh, well, how are things going with you in Corona Land? Well... I will say that this quarantine has not been uh, great for my sobriety. That's for sure. We've been hearing um, that. <laughs> I think the alcohol stores are doing well in their in their sales, so I that's think, good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. My brother-in-law works at at a liquor store, and and things are going very well there. They're making they're making money, and it makes sense because uh holy hell what else what else would you want to do in these times than than drink oh it makes absolute sense it makes absolute sense why not drink you know why not drink it's much more fun drinking and being the toxic person than it is not drinking and dealing with the toxic person that's very true that's very true you know i've had experience in both realms there being the absurdly drunk person whom everybody has to take care of and also having to take care of the person who is absurdly drunk and i have to say obviously the preferable one is to be the absurdly drunk person it's much much better much much better absolutely like i'm so drunk but i just accept this as my personality now can i say you don't you you don't sound very drunk you sound you sound kind of sober really you know i mean i don't know you at all i don't i don't know who you are but you know you're not slurring your words you're not saying anything crazy inflammatory you sound kind of reasonable well i'm a happy drunk 
That's good. You see, and that's good. When people are happy drunks, I don't see the problem with alcoholism. It's like the angry drunks and the sad drunks, they shouldn't be alcoholics because they're, they're a bummer. Oh, yeah. That's a bad time. But for the That'd people that are just bad. like, they get drunk and they just want to have a good time and, and raise the morale of everybody by getting drunk, it's almost a selfless act. They're sacrificing themselves for entertainment. And it's it's truly, difficult. It's difficult. Truly exactly. It's hard to be that drunk. It's hard to be as drunk as I am right now and still, uh, you know, n- um, well, hold on. I, I hold on now. Uh, I lost my train of thought. It's okay, I forgive you. I don't know what I'm talking about half the time anyway. No. It's weird though. It's weird, you know. I think it'd be better. It's like it's a isn't it a pain in the ass when you're when you're partying with friends and they don't want to get as drunk as you? What a, isn't that such a like I hate that. Responsibility, right? You you have a responsibility oh. to your friends, I think, where you're like you should get as drunk as them and have a good time. That I think that's that should be required, you know? It's it's it oh, makes yeah. it makes the drunk friend feel bad when they're the drunkest. Oh yeah, and you can't you can't make them feel bad. You have to go shot for shot with them. There's no other option. That's right. If you start making them feel bad, then they're going to go down that whole sad drunk spiral and it's not going to be fun for anybody. You get it's it's oh, yeah. part of, yeah. It's part of the We don't need any more. We don't need any more crying drunks, that's for sure. Man. That, that's a total buzz kill. Isn't it? Holy hell. Oh yeah. Are you oh, yeah. are you are you like uh, okay. When I was when I was in college, this is when I, I started drinking in college. You know, there's lots of people who drink in high school and stuff. I never drank in high school, not even once. When I got to college, boom, baby, started drinking nonstop. It was great. Loved it. But at that time, I was more of a sad drunk. And what a bummer. What a, what a waste. Why would you ever want to hang out with a sad drunk? I can't imagine getting teardrops in my beer. I think it would just ruin it. Exactly. It waters it down. It makes it salty. And you just, and you have to keep telling this person, no, you're, it's fine. You're, you're good. You're, you're a funny guy. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be fine. You're going to have a happy life someday. It's fine. Now when I get drunk, I am happy, and that's that's all I need. I've I've, I've like I've gotten that ex- that feeling of acceptance. We're like that's what I actually wanted in the first place was to just have that good, nice, drunk feeling. When I was in Hell college, yeah. I was when I got drunk, I was feeling sad about the future. I was like, oh man. I'm just some drunk college kid and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But now when I get drunk, I'm like, oh shit, this is this. This is what it is. This is the good stuff. Being drunk by yourself on a Sunday night. Sometimes you just got to kill enough brain cell to have fun. Isn't that kind of disturbing? I don't think you were there. Maybe you weren't there yet in college. Maybe you're too smart in college. Dude. Maybe you're just too smart for your own good and Dude. you had to kill some brain cells. <laughs> that's exactly and what now it you're is. There. That's now exactly you're there. yeah, that's exactly what it is. In college I was still thinking about the future. Cause I had those brain cells, they weren't destroyed yet, and I was like, Oh no, I can't do this. I can't keep getting drunk like this. Even though it's fun, it's gonna destroy my life. But now I've gotten rid of all those pesky brain cells. <laughs> and that's what I like. Oh, yeah. I like to forget, get drunk. Forget the future. Forget that. Just just drink your beer. The future just is now. Living in, I'm oh, living yeah. in the present. Just like all those hippies talk about. Oh, yeah. Those damn hippies and their weed. Maybe they should just try being drunk 24-7. That's a whole new world to live in, in my opinion. It's holistic. That would be the holistic option, would be drinking. 
Absolutely. And it's natural. It's natural. It comes from, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, wheat. Oh, you can even make it in jail. You can make it in jail. That's how natural it, it is. Natural. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You can just take, you can, you can scrounge up any household materials, put it in a sock, leave it in the bathtub for about five weeks, and that's going to turn into alcohol. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's how natural it is. I mean, it is it is the natural it's remedy. Practically, practically organic. It's I yes, practically organic. I absolutely agree. All I right, tell people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? No, no, no. I was just uh, go on. Oh, I tell people when I drink vodka that I'm juicing because technically I'm juicing a potato. That is so accurate. And it, it's shocking, actually, to hear such an accurate statement broadcasted live on air. You would never hear such an accurate statement on the television. This is the only sort of place where you can get this kind of information. You, can, you just have to kill enough brain cells to get to the truth. I, I think that's exactly right. And it's, this, is, this is why we do the show is because we want to get to the realness you know, on TV and everywhere else, the corporate media, they they avoid the realness. They avoid it like the plague because they know that the realness is dangerous. And the realness is that we should be drinking and we should enjoy it because it is fun. And we shouldn't have to deal with, okay, if you can be a functional alcoholic, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Do you feel like you're a functional alcoholic? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> nice. Nice. Absolutely. Hell yes, baby. Not even a question. When do you drink? I What's your my, first drink of the day? My first drink. I call it a spicy coffee. <laughs> mm, I like the sound of that. Oh, yeah. You get Personally, that coffee for me... Spicy- I just I drink coffee until I start drinking alcohol. I've never thought to mix the two, but what a what an idea that is. Look here, mister. You're never hungover if you're always drunk. No, no, I think that's some brilliant advice to end on. Thank you for calling in today. Thank you for having my phone call. Absolutely. I appreciate your call. Thank you for calling. Bye bye. You never have a hangover if you're always drunk. That's how it goes, baby. Is there anything else I wanted to do? Okay, shit, I need to do the the last thing here. The corona test results. This is my piss. If we remember. I wish I had tweezers to grab this ketone strip out of here, but... I don't, okay? I don't have tweezers. I'm a man. I'm a man. All right, I'm going to touch piss. I'm going to touch piss. Get over it. It's gone cold. (laughs) I swear it was warm at first, but it's gone cold. Okay, let's look at this thing. Where's the strip? What the? It's gone white. Wait, I just re- I just realized I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh shit. Okay. Okay, just 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 so you know, I'm not yanking your chain here. This is what the strip looked like. You can see you see that? It's a different color there on the end. It's a bit difficult to see. Now this is the strip. Okay, so you see that? This is what the strip looks like now. It's gone totally white. What does it mean? What does it mean? 
Okay, they got that. Good cause, good cause. The promises on it. One of the things I'm going to do with the other thing is you can see ketones discarded in urine. Intent to identify ketones in urine as a process of non management diabetes, not diabetic, along with the carbohydrates. Sugar promotes the use of ketones and fat from stores. Like the glucose, the problem with the good uh, and, and, and primary source of energy for the body. Lack of sufficient insulin prevents the body from using glucose. Glucose from the ketoacidosis. Warning. Fruity odor on breath. Hard time paying attention or confusion. What does that mean? Frequent urination. These are warnings. These are warnings if you perhaps have problems with ketoacidosis. True plus ketone strips consist of these plus Warning upon opening the test strip carton, examine the product from missing bed. Okay, no. Do not consume. Do not use for blood testing. Do not transfer. Give me nothing. What's it okay. Oh, here it is. Wait, wait. Yes. It's negative. It's negative. Look. There's a color chart. If it turned magenta, that would have been large. A large amount of ketone. Z then it moderate small trace, but I'm negative. I'm negative. Rob, I'm negative. Can you believe it? I don't have Corona. You can stop pissing your pants about the goddamn mask business. I mean, Jesus, uh, I don't have Corona. I don't have Corona. I don't have Corona. I have the test. Yeah, I mean, that's that. I don't have it. That's the test. I don't have... I mean, okay, you might be thinking, why does, what does ketone have to do with corona? I looked it up online. You don't even have to think about why the test matters because I looked it up beforehand, and that's why it matters. But yeah, I don't have corona. Hmm. Rob, you idiot. Thinking I have Krona, stupid son of a bitch. All right. I guess we're going to call it then. That's the show. That's the whole show. I don't have Krona. Last thing I'm going to do before the show ends, I'm going to chug this glass of white wine. Hmm. Um, it's huh. okay, okay, okay. It's okay. I'll smell them. I'll smell them. They smell the same. They smell the same to me. Oh no. What have I done? Okay, I'm gonna chug the glass of white wine and I know which one it is. Oh, can't get this wrong. No, okay. I know which one it is. I know which one it is. <clears throat> Cast your votes now. Which glass is the glass of white wine and which is the glass of piss? It doesn't matter what your vote is because I already know which one is the white wine. I'm going to chug that one. Which is that one. It's 
Not that one. It's this one. All right. Thank you for watching the Chronocast. Uh, I got, I got, I got nothing else to say. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll do this again sometime. This is a lot of fun. Again, the people who made this possible were everybody who contributes to the zine. You can look in the description of the video and you can find links to the zine. All the past zines. You can purchase the upcoming zine. This one. It's also the people who make Signal Return. There's a new episode of that coming out. I hope you enjoy all that shit. I hope you enjoyed this. And cheers. <laughs> Oh, oh.